It's the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia. This is the Schmodown Free Fall. 40 competitors all going head to head to head to head to head. We just break it! We just think we a miracle! We're tied up at two, everybody. What an ovation for the kids! Welcome back to the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia for our annual event. It's one of the most fun shows we put on all year. It is the fifth edition of the Free For All. The Free For All, it is where every person, until one person standing, <laughs> is left to get a potential title shot in any division. And man, and then in this year, Mark, we also have the MVP. Yep. And, and the MVP will have a special prize that we'll announce after we figure out who the MVP is. That's a little different this year. But before we get to that, we wanted to address a couple of things just up top. There's an elephant in the room because you can't see our trunks. That's right. And as you guys know, and as you've seen the new season, you haven't seen the mask. And you're seeing the mask now. And you'll see the mask from all the competitors. On bad breath on this guy. Horrible. Just uh, really bad. I got to get it fixed up. No. What we, uh, on the set today, someone on the set did test positive. And so what we wanted to um, make sure that everybody, every single person was safe. And we went through all the precautions to make sure that everybody was safe. And we went through with the production crew and with every with the, with the competitors and everyone to make sure that we took all the precautions to make sure that we could get this thing happening. And the, it was either wear the mask, don't do a show. So we decided we wanted to make sure the show went for on, you. and we're doing it for you guys. That's right. Everything's been sanitized. We have a thick layer of gel on the floor. We've been socially spacing outside. We have the masks. It's like we practiced for this for a couple of years, and now it all pays off here at Free For All 5. Again, here is how the format is going to work, Christian. We introduce competitors, five to the table, and then they get up there. If they try to answer five trivia questions, whoever is in the lead or whoever's at least not trailing will advance and continue to get to be up at the podium. Whoever has the least amount of points will be eliminated if multiple competitors have the least amount of points they're all kicked out and we bring in new competitors and it's uh, you never know who's going to show up and we know some people that have been confirmed but you never know who's going to show up in the free fall there's 40 competitors confirmed so you don't know we do know that the champion sam levine is in the free for all he announced that yesterday with his title defense against last year's free for all winner paul oyama cashes in into the last moment and sam takes that first title defense in his new reign as champion so we just we know that Sam will show up. Paul said it in his post. He'll show up. So we know those are confirmed. Who else? We don't know. It is the free-for-all. First studio free-for-all back in quite a while. So we're excited, Mark. Glad to be on the table with you, Colin. Yeah, very excited to see what teams we get as individuals this time. Because as we saw yesterday, in addition to Levine again defending his title, we also got to see Shazam defending theirs. And so maybe we'll see the individual members of Corruption. But yeah. now they are no longer a thing courtesy of right. Shazam. Will Bibiani and the kid be able to put on one of their great free-for-all performances, or will they just be a little too exhausted from yesterday? Anything and everything could go here today, because it's the Schmodown free-for-all. Christian, you about ready to get going here? I'm ready to get going, and once uh, once again, for everybody who's watching on Patreon, thank you so much. If you've purchased it, thank you so much. Don't forget about Friday Night Titans. Leave a comment. Even if you're in the live chat right now, leave a comment right now. It helps with the interaction, but with that, we're going to send it over to our ring announcer for the night. Who's the that? one and only Ken Napsack. Ladies, gentlemen, and all our friends around the world, it's time for the Free For All. There it is. Good, good crowd, socially like distancing. Here is the competitor who drew number one. No. <laughs> Wait, this is a way to kick things that's off. That's a way to do it. 
Oh, the champ is here! He is the 2017 Free For All winner and the current reigning, defending, undisputed movie trivia schmodan champion of the world, the Inglorious One, Sam Wow, that, that's got to be intimidating for anybody else coming out. Sam Levine, number one, and he is number one in all showdown right now anyway. So Still got the belt to prove it, and any other competitor gets it through his neck. Might be shaking in their boots. Yeah, this is, here we go. Ken. Here is the competitor that drew number two. <laughs> Which one? Which one is it? Yeah, this is... Uh, Which one? Could be one of two, and we could see a shiny belt come through that. We're going to definitely see a belt. The question is, who's holding it? Oh, he does it again! The From the Quirky <laughs> Mode! He is a former two-time free-for-all MVP. Wow. And the current team division champion, William the Beast Bibiani. Wow. This is the first time Bibiani and Sam have been back competing against each other in years. You know how bad Bibi Bibiani wants to get to Levine to that title. The team's champion, the singles champion. What a one and two. What a one and two. Back to you, Ken, for competitor three. And now, the competitor that drew number three. <laughs> wow. They're building a little murderer's row up I here know, to kick things it, off. Especially... Wow! Oh, last year, From Twitter. Swag, he is the 2021 Free For All Champion, Prime Time Paul Oyama! Paul Oyama won it last year, just faced Sam yesterday, and now he's here as number three. Look at that lineup! Those are three former singles champions, the current singles champion, and the three team champion right now. Oh my god. They are men of their words, and they said they were going to show up yesterday. Here they are. Ken? And now, the competitor who drew number four! Who is this going to be? Oh, it's From the, the it. dungeon, make it his free-for-all debut, the database. He yep. has played really well thus far in his season, and it's exciting to see him here. Yeah. All right, now we swing back to Ken Napsock for contestant five. And now, the fifth competitor. <laughs> Man. I don't know what's about to emerge through that curtain, Christian, but yeah, it sounds I do. fearsome. There they are. Wow. The Finstock Exchange, brought to the arena by his partner, Elvis. This is the Barbarian. Barbarian, the database. Primetime Polo Yama, the Beast, and the inglorious one, Sam Levine. What an absolute devastating row of trivia players we have right here mark i mean this uh, who i don't know who has the advantage you'd have to assume that right now if you're the database you're a little intimidated what can the kid prove especially after the way he debuted the database is a rookie and it looks like the barbarian striking a little bit of fear into the heart of everyone that's right folks look at that lineup that's not a devry graduation ceremony those are five of the best movie trivia competitors ever to walk the earth and with them we're going to kick off the questioning in the free-for-all after a friendly reminder that five total questions will be in each round. Each question is worth a point. No penalty for missing a question. You have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. We do have no repeats for any of you throughout the match. If a mask happens to hinder the pronunciation or you can't understand a question, we are happy to repeat in that event. There are also no challenges in the free-for-all. Keep in mind that we also have overtime should there be a five-way tie to kick things off. Overtime will feature three questions and work like a normal five-question round. Christian, when you're ready to go, the first question is yours. All right, so here we go. Let's start with Sam Levine. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Bibiani, are you ready? I'm exhausted and my knee injury hurts like it hasn't in years. Let's do this. Prime time. Set your clock. Let's do this. 
Database. I want to play. And Barbarian. You know, I see four people here that think they might be able to win, but really, it doesn't make a difference. Because all I see are losers. Ah, oh, boo. Oh. And today, you four are going to lose to me. All right, well. Uh, well then Barbarian, I respect your confidence. Thank you. With that, can that so. Let's get ready to slow down. All right. All right. All right, here we go. Question one, we're going to start with Pixar. Who voices frightening Frank McKay, a scarer who inspires a young Mike to follow him into the profession in Monsters University? I just wish we had a camera on Ken, the way he delivered that let's get ready. Yeah. Looking like a uh, later in life Orson Welles. Ah. The clock. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence, now we go to Sam Levine. I've been waiting four long years to say this. It's Jane Fonda. That is, <laughs> in, that is incorrect. Uh, That's the Viviani. first time he's missed in like five years. There you go. I got to be here for that. Yep. I don't know. It's a Bill Hader. It, it is not. How about Paul I wish it was. That would be fun. John Krasinski. Correct. That is correct. Uh, database. John Krasinski. Correct. And Barbarian. Did not have wow. So the database and Paul Oyama. Only two now? to get oh, that I would gladly. All right. Cool. Question number two is in the category of Marvel movies, the world of both the MCU and standalone Marvel properties. Here it is, your question. What 2000s film features performances from Donal Logue, Brett Cullen, Rebel Wilson, and Peter Fonda? Who's who? Cast in that one. Nah, who knows anymore? I, I, I give up. It's all out of your head at this it point. It is, it really as is. As it is mine. Right. And we go to five, four, Three, two, one. Pens down, and let's go to the beast. Uh, that would be Ghost Rider. That Just is correct. Paul Oyama. Ghost Rider. And the database. Ghost Rider. And the barbarian. Ghost Rider. Sam Levine. I did not have it, sir. Sam oh, Levine. Maybe a little Sam. worn out from yesterday. He didn't Where know he was, was this yesterday. when we played, Sam? You're asking me, friend. Good night. All right, here we go. Question three. Question three. We're going to sports films. Who directed Shia LaBeouf as amateur golf champion Francis Ume? In we the, met. You met. Thank you. In the sports film, the greatest game ever played. Francis, we met. We met. And that would be. This is question three. O U I, like <sighs> an affirmation yeah. in the French language, the language of love. Five, four, three, two, one. Starting with prime time. Uh, Mr. Bill Paxton. You are right to call him Mr. The Database. I had the right answer to a different question. <laughs> okay, well, oh. the kid Wait, does that count? Can we do that? The Barbarian? Nope. nope. And Sam Levine. Feeling like me again, Bill Paxton. And The Beast. The great William Paxton. Okay, so look at that. So right now, so Sam now with one, Bibiani with two, Primetime with three, The Database with two, and Barbarian one. So Barbarian and Sam tied as we get to the fourth question. Here it is, and it is in the category of movie release dates. Your question. What year saw the release of installments in both the James Bond and Revenge of the Nerds franchises? All right, kind of an interesting... Uh, I'm going to say it's a forkball from the writers early It's on. pretty nuts so far when you look at especially... Tough questions, too. Yeah. <sighs> so, Got to think it through and no repeats. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going to start with the database. 1987? Is correct for a point, Barbarian. Didn't have that one Didn't either. Didn't have it, did Sam Levine? 1987. Oh. How about the Beast? Uh, it seemed pretty dystopian to me, so I said 1987. Oh. <laughs> and uh, prime time. 1987. Is 87. Right. Okay, so Christian, we got an interesting scenario already yes. at Free For All 5. All right, so the Barbarian needs to hit this, and he needs both Sam and Bibbs to miss also, and all three of them could potentially be gone. Yeah. However, it works here. Uh, the hero, here it is. Here's the fifth okay. question here. Fifth question is streaming movies. Ah. Streaming movies. Okay. Here it is. What 2017 action thriller features Frank Grillo as a getaway driver alongso alongside Garrett Dillahunt, Shea Wiggum, and Caitlin Carmichael? That's Shea Wiggum. Any uh, relation to Chief Wiggum, the police officer? Oh, that would be amazing. I'd watch that right now. I'd leave Ralph the desk. Wiggum, the, uh, the schoolboy. Yeah. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. We're starting with the 
barbarian. I'm gonna put a blank board. A blank board is incorrect. That's How about just not right? It'll be a miracle. Boss level. Uh, that is incorrect too. Wheelman. It is wheelman. Prime time. Wheelman. Add wow. wheelman database. Wheelman. And with that, the barbarian has been eliminated. So the barbarian. Oh, we talk man. all that smack. A lot of smack. Talk all that smack. smack. He is the Let's first one out. So the barbarian is gone. So Sam Levine, Bibiani. Prime time and the database survived that round. And now we get to Ken Napsok, who will bring in number six. Here is the number six competitor. What's that? I don't know that music. It sounds intense. Like a focused movie trivia competitor, someone new. I don't know that music. Whoa, who's this? From the first class league and oh. making his Schmodown debut, The Survivor! The Survivor is here who had a nice showing in the FCL. He makes his yeah. Schmodown debut inside the free-for-all mark. And the Survivor has now joined the ranks of the four competitors who survived the first round. And now Christian will be kicking us off here in the free-for-all continuum. All right, movie quotes is what we're starting with. Movie quotes. What Clint Eastwood film features the line? You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns and those who dig. You dig? What a cool quote. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? It's something like I feel like... That's you who I'll make you famous. But no one can pull that off today. It's tough, yeah. yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's start with The Beast. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That is correct. How about prime time? I don't know. I don't think you can accept this. I've tried to write it, but I don't know if I got it in time. The good, the bad, uh, and the ugly. Sorry, can't, yeah, can't quite make it out, unfortunately. Let's see if the database had it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. That is correct. And the survivor. It said uh, Dirty Harry. Uh, it's still a question. I the wrong movie. man with no name film, guys. Same with, okay. Yeah. Long time Fun fact, right. he actually has a name in all of them. I know, it's Manko. <laughs> Mark? Question two coming down here in... This round is in the category of LGBTQ films, and the question is, who directed Caitlin Deaver and Beanie Feldstein in the 2019 coming-of-age comedy Book Smart, which Christian and I are not, cannot even be accused of. No. Uh, haven't cracked a book in years. <laughs> My daughter is <laughs> way more than us. Five, four, three, two, one, prime time. Uh, can't wait for Don't Worry Darling. Uh, Olivia Wilde. Is correct. The database. Olivia Wilde. The survivor to get on the board. Did not have it. Sam Levine. It's Olivia Wilde. And the beast. I also had Olivia Wilde. And you are also correct. That's nice. Two right. to two to one to one to zero. All right, here's the next category, guys, in the world of comedies. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, you guys. That's what they want. Good sports. Oh. Yeah, good sports. That's what they want, you guys. Which actor starred in the comedies Dinner for Schmucks, The Campaign, and Due Date? All right, it, it's not just all these different categories. It's right. also just the wide variety of how a question is asked. Sometimes we're looking for a performer. Sometimes it's a movie. It's right. a release date. It's a lot of thinking up there for these competitors in a matter of five, four, three, two, one. The database. Zach Galifianakis. That is correct. How about the survivor to get on the board? Survivor head Zach Galifianakis. That is correct. Sam Levine. Zach Galifianakis. And William Bibiani. Zach Galifianakis. Closing out with primetime. Zach Galifianakis. All, All right. correct. Yeah, got it right. So right now, score Sam Levine with Did two. anyone spell it right? Yeah. No. Anyone at all? Probably. I don't know. It's Probably. Yeah, Sam and uh, the, the database the both have two. And, excuse me, Sam has two. Beast has three. Paul Yama with two. The database with three. And the survivor with one. All right. That's why here. we put the score right there for everybody to look at. Sometimes you can't see <laughs> it. On the, on the screen right there. It. No, sometimes can't, I can't, can't really see it. Hi, Mom. Oh, yeah, look I at that. Hey. Oh, there you go. All right, here we go. score up for it. That's nice. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> we pull out all the stops here, don't we? Go ahead, Your next category is in the world of SCTV alum. Hey, that's, uh, that's a fun thing. Thrilled I got to ask this question. Ooh. And it is, which SCTV alum plays the role of Ned Niederlander, a silent film actor, in the film The Three Amigos? So looking for one amigo in particular. We're going to find out who is going to hit it as far as this is. A there is an interesting scenario here. Survivor hits, a couple others yeah. miss. Five, four, three, two, one. And we are starting with the survivor. That would be Martin Short. Not going to give up, give up. How about Sam? 
<laughs> I loved him in Little Nanny Goes to War. Martin Short. That is correct. Beast. He was the three. Oh, Amigos. That is impressive. Prime time, you don't have to My deliver. My demented child, Martin Short. That is correct, and yeah. the database. Martin Short. All right, so closing out, one more question here. All right, so one more question here. So the database needs to hit this, and you need some people to... Sorry, not the database, excuse me. Uh, the survivor needs to hit it, needs some people to miss. Here it is. This is a wild card slice. <laughs> it is the Schmodown stars in movies. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of an unfair advantage for one of these competitors. It Here it is. Jack, I was in that. Which <laughs> Schmodown personality features as a news anchor named Connie in Jason Mew's 2019 crime comedy film, Madness in the Method? All right, so we're really going to find out who's friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On and now off camera. Here at the Schmodown, a fun little rinker. Uh, wrinkle put in by our writers. Five, four, three. Two, one. Starting with a star in his own right, the Angorious One. Is it our own Roxy Stryer? It is our own Roxy Stryer, the Beast. Yeah, if you're just gonna make stuff up, uh, I go. Okay, and prime time. Roxy Stryer is correct, and the database. I'd buy some of them. Okay, good guess, <laughs> but no, the Survivor. Survivor had Roxy Stryer. Wow. Okay, so he hit it, but with that, the Survivor has been eliminated. This table is right now. Be some four, the fearsome four, you would call it. You were great, thank you. But yeah, the they're, survivor, they're forming a collective against any new person who tries to invade that podium space. So they, right now, you have Sam Levine still surviving. You have the Beast, Prime Time, and the Database. The Database, good move for the kid so far. He's got two rounds in. He's playing well. He doesn't seem to be affected by the pressure, nor is Ken Knapsack. And now, the competitor at number seven. Well, that's the Merck's music. That's fun. That's the Merck's music. Yeah, it, it, I we, wonder which of my friends will be here. Limited the pool of talent. It is going to be a comrade to William Bibiani. Yes. Oh, oh lightning Murray! Making her return to the free for all! Lightning Liz Shannon Miller! Ah, that gets tough. That gets tough. Lightning Liz Shannon Miller played for the titles last year. She has had an incredible career in the showdown thus far. And now is with the Quirky Mercs. This is a really solid table. And we keep on going, Mark. That's right. Christian's going to kick off the questioning in this and every round. Look out for Lightning Liz. She usually has some magic under that hat. All right, here we go. In the category of Westerns. What comedian played the role of Theodore Ogilvy in the Disney films The Apple Dumpling Gang and The Apple Dumpling Gang Rides Again? Good for them. I'm glad they got back on the horse. They were very, they were very excited about you getting know? back on the horse. Yeah, it seemed like a successful gang the first time out, so why not run it back? That's right. And we are going to be asking for answers here in five, four, three, two, one, starting with the Angorious one. That Don Knotts? You don't ask. You are correct. That is the beast. The movies have surprisingly little to do with dumplings. It's Don Knotts. And Paul Yama. Fine guess. Don Knotts. Wow. 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 The database. I didn't have it. Did not have it, Lightning Liz. I did not have did it. Did not have all it either. Right. So only the first three did get it, and both the database and Liz missed on that one. Here's the next I thought one. he was a very credible Mr. Limpet myself. <laughs> all right. Your next question well. is musicians in films category. And here we go. What musician portrayed serial killer Daryl Lee Cullum opposite Sigourney Weaver in the film Copycat? Are cats known for mimicry? I believe like, so. Why were they the animal when people were making these decisions that we should name the copiers after? I don't write this stuff, Mark. I don't know. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go to cat owner, William Bibiani. My favorite serial killer movie is Harry Connick Jr. Is correct, Paul Yama. Harry Connick Jr. Primetime had that one. How about the database? Harry Connick Jr. It's in the computer. Lightning Liz. Harry Connick Jr. And Sam Levine. Harry Connick They all knew him. Oh, okay. So right now, we got Sam and William and Paul with two and both the database and Liz with one. All right. Next question, Middle Earth. Here is the question. In Return of the King, who asks Aragorn, have you learned nothing of the stubbornness of dwarves? I certainly haven't. Had no Ever? idea they were uh, a stubborn folk. Well, now you do. They always seem pretty uh, pleasant, jovial to me. Nice enough. Five, four. They can put away the alcohol, too. Yes, three. Two, one. Let's start with prime time. 
I have Gimli. Uh, that is incorrect. How about the database? That's Gandalf. Is also incorrect. Lightning Liz. Also Gandalf. Is incorrect, uh, Sam. Also Gimli. And William. I have Gimli. Wow, everybody <laughs> missed Legolas. 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 Yeah. Legolas. He's and... such a racist in that movie. Wow. If you guys had just He's... let me call Rachel Cushing, we I, all would have gotten. Phone Friend calls are strictly prohibited at the free for all. All right, Mark, here's the next one. That's right. So now we come down to wrestlers in film is the question. And here we go. Which wrestler appeared in the following films? The Longest Yard, The Expendables, and Grown Ups 2. A lot of cameos in all of those movies. Yes, a lot. <laughs> tons. tons. There's a tons. lot of famous folks in those movies. I mean... They're, they're really fun with a lot of famous people. Like five. We're seeing right now. Yep. Four at the podium. Three, two, one. And let's start with the database. I want Steve Austin. You are correct. How about Lightning Liz? That would be Mr. Steve Stone Cold Steve Austin. That is right. And Sam? Steve Austin. And William? I'm not even going to embarrass myself. All right. <laughs> and Paul Oyama, did you have it? Stone Cold Steve Austin. All right. Okay. So only Bibiani misses that one as we approach our final question. Things getting interesting. Very interesting because Sam has three and Paul Oyama have three. The rest have two. Mm -hmm. So here is the final question. <laughs> Courtroom dramas here and legal thrillers. Could be a legal thriller yes. as well. What year saw the release of the films Ghosts of Mississippi and Primal Fear? Are you more of a courtroom drama or a legal thriller kind of guy? Depends on who wrote it. Don't say correct or incorrect yet. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. And let's start with Lightning Liz. I'm going to go with 1994. All right, now let's just go to Sam Levine. 1996. Let's try William DeBeast. 1998. Let's try Paul Oyama. 1996. That's a lot of years here at the oh, database. 1991. Okay, somebody's wrong. 1996 is correct. Sam Levine hits it. Paul Oyama hits it. And with that, we now have William the Beast Bibiani has been eliminated. Oh, thank God. Liz Shannon Miller has been eliminated, and the database has been eliminated. Wow. Thank wow. you. All wow. right, so the Beast, a legendary free-for-all performer. The database no, showing some really new moxie and lightning that is always a threat. Have all been struck courtesy of Primetime at Sam Levine. Hey, Christian, this looks familiar. We just saw this <laughs> yesterday. This happened yesterday. This was the title match, and now these two men are standing as we await our next contestant, Ken Napsok. And now the competitor who drew number eight. Oh, man. I know the music. I'm not sure if you know it's familiar, but I know the music. It sounds like some sort of assassin. That, hey, that is Hammer of Moses. Making his free for all debut, the silent assassin, Hammer of Moses. That's a good, that's a good number two. That's a good, that, that's a good book. And this is, look at former, former manager, yeah. Sam Levine, now competing against his protege, if you will, Hammer of Moses. And now, number nine, number nine, number nine. What is that? Who is that? It sounds peppy. Oh my god! Oh, oh, the fans' favorite! It's Adam Witt! Adam Witt coming back to compete. He's managing, and now he's back to compete. Interesting. He's looking confident, if nothing else. All right, so who's going to be, who's number 10 in the fifth on the table? And now, the competitor who drew number 10. That is what the Cobra does. Oh. Don't say I don't <laughs> warn you. Wow. From Corruption. Wow. Making his free for all debut. Is that true? The oh, Cobra yeah. Chance Allison. Oh, Brought me, uh, brought me a nice cold beverage. Look at that. Thank you. Got a couple <laughs> brewskis for uh, later. That, that's a very interesting fact that this is Chance Ellison's first free-for-all. Very uh, interesting. My son's very excited to be competing. Well, that's a table and a half. It doesn't get any easier in the free-for-all as we get to the next round, Mark. Here we go. 
We're going to start with Swashbuckling and Pulp. What 1994 pulp film starring Al Alec Baldwin is set in 1930s New York and follows reformed criminal Lamont Cranston, who becomes a superhero? All right, and so very different looking set here now that we've had some competitors out, more in, and some fresh blood up there at the question podium. Five, four, three, two, one. The Inglorious. That's the shadow. He is correct. How about Amaru Moses? Who knows? The shadow knows. That's his first point in a free for all. How about prime time? So far from the shadow now. Uh, the shadow. Adam Witt. The very rated shadow. And <laughs> Chance Ellison kind of looking like the shadow. <laughs> Can't miss this. The shadow. That's wow. right. And, and Chance <laughs> Ellison also scoring his first point there in the free for all. All right, here we go. All right, your next category is in the world of fantasy movies. And here <laughs> is the. It's more for comedy. Here's the question. What 1985 fantasy film features martial artist Ernie Reyes Jr. as a character named Prince Tarn? Oh <laughs> I, I, guess I, I like what you're doing. I like, I like, and I like like the, you got a little sinister with that. I, I you get a little devious streak uh -huh. in me. Five, four, three, two, one. Starting with Amaru Moses. Red Sonia. That is correct. Did primetime have it? I did not. He did wow. not. Adam Witt. Barry Gordy's the last dragon. Wow. Oh, how about Chance Ellison? I did not have it. And the Angorious one. I too did not Whoa, have it. Whoa, Amaru uh, Moses I taking the lead. The only it. one to get oh. that one. Yeah. Wow, okay. So that was big. That was big. So Amaru <laughs> Moses. So here's question three. Question three comes in monster movies. Monster movies. Of the following universal monsters, which did Abbott and Costello not meet in a movie? The Invisible Man, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein, or The Wolfman? That, okay. It's you got a little question. diabolical ask at that. I just that love the question. That's yeah. a great question by the writing team. All right, Amaru Moses with his custom NBA Junior yes. whiteboard. Five, four, three, two, one, and let's try primetime. The Creature from the Black Lagoon. That is correct. How about Adam Witt? I wanted to see it so bad, though. Creatures of the Black Lagoon. <laughs> I mean, there's, maybe there's still time somehow. Chance? I whipped. Well, Didn't have it. Creature from the Black Sam Lagoon. Sam did and Amaru to stay in the lead. The Creature from the Black Lagoon. He's on point wow, today. Yes, so. <laughs> Sam and Lee with two. Amaru with three. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Paul with, with two. Adam with two. And Chance with one. Chance needs to have a comeback here. Move on to our penultimate question here in round number whatever. It's the 2010s is the category. The question. Judd Hirsch and Kevin Garnett appear opposite Adam Sandler in what 2019 crime thriller? So yeah, if, if you're Ellison, you know you got to hit this one and then just hope for shenanigans with the fifth and final question. All right, All right here we go. In five, four, three, two. One, starting with the fan favorite, in his own mind, Adam Witt. Uncut Gems? Is correct. Oh. Did Chance Ellison have it? Uncut Gems. There he is, Sam. I'm going to say it correctly. Uncut Gems! Uh, <laughs> I can do that as well. Amaru Moses. Anything is possible. Uncut Gems. Had Uncut oh. Gems. Amaru Moses, what a round. Sam stole my joke. Uh, Uncut Gems. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be quick on the draw here. Sure he did. All right, so uh, now Chance Ellison needs to hit this, and he also needs Sam and, uh, excuse me, Sam and Adam to also miss to eliminate the other two. All right, here we go. This is a wild card. It's a wild card, and it's Boston-based films. Mm. What is the subtitle to the 2009 sequel to 1999's The Boondock Saints? All right. The fans of the question yeah. up there on the desk. It's probably because they know the answer. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Paul. And we're going to go with Chance Ellison. Is correct, Sam. All Saints Day. Amaru. I don't know how I remember this. All Saints Day. <laughs> he did, and that's a perfect round for Amaru Moses. Prime time. Just had Saints Day. Just had Saints Ooh, Day. Right. And Adam Witt. The Superman 4 of the uh, Boondock Saints movies, All Saints Day. <laughs> okay, and so Witt hits it, but with that prime time, Paul wow. Oyama, literally one word away. Chance Ellison started off slow, got hot late, not in time. And so, Christian, two huge eliminations coming down here. And with that, Chance Ellison and Paul Oyama have been eliminated. Wow. Wow. Wow.
And, and, and they fall sick. And they can't, can't Chance just fall on his sword and let me stay here? But no, Chance no. got it. And and, you, and and prime time, you could always go a long way here. He was up for the challenge yesterday, couldn't pull it off, and now he's out of the free for all. But the inglorious one who retained his belt still from prime time, there. Yeah. still there. He is in there longest thus far. What a performance by Amadou Moses thus far with that first round. But it's also interesting that Paul Yama, who had a great couple of rounds, was taken out by Chance Ellis and his rival in the fan leagues, his rival now in the Schmodown, and now his rival takes him out with him so at least chance didn't go his first performance you know goes out in the first round but he does take polo yama out with yeah, i mean him. none of these competitors are falling down or even stumbling it's just any yeah. false move is gonna hurt you all right now we throw two ken napsack who will bring in, bringing in two more competitors ken who we got and now the competitor who drew number 11. <laughs> He is a man unto himself, making his season nine debut. This is Paul. And now here is the competitor at number twelve. Well, we know we heard this music earlier. We did, and so if we know it's not one, can only be the other. The other belt holder in the team's division. There From he is. From the Quirky Burks. There he is. The current team's division co-champion, Brendan the Kid Maya. Remember, he made his name in the free for all in 2019 yeah. when he went many, many rounds in the 2019 free for all, and now he's a champion. Two champions up there right now, singles and the teams. Can this team's outlast the singles champion? We'll find out. Very exciting stuff up here at the podium because Amaru and the kid look like the child of these three wacky uncles. All right, we're going to get to our next question here, Mark. Uh, starting up, we start with sequels and prequels. What is the title of the second film in the James Bond franchise, which once again starred Sean Connery as 007? All right, if I just tell you you're walking into a theater and you have to either see a sequel to something or a prequel to something, which theater are you walking into? That's a loaded question. Uh, that's why it's fun. It's a game. You know? uh, prequel. I'm not actually going to hold you to it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's do it, Sam. From Russia with Love? That is correct. Ooh. How about Amaru Moses? From Russia with Love. Wow. Nailed that one. He's still perfect, Saul. From Russia with love. Oh, the little fake out. Adam Witt. I'll do it. From Russia with love. Waiting the kid. From Russia with love. Wow. All facing the James Bond question. So we move on to the guys that James Bond hates because this category is crime movies. And here is your question. Of the following actors, who has not appeared in the Oceans franchise? Topher Grace, Isla Fisher, Robbie Coltrane, or Dakota Fanning? Great question. <laughs> that one, that was a, a little. One. It's a good one. Tectonic. It's a really good question. It's a shifty question. And let's see who's going to hit it this time. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down, Sir Moses. Dakota Fanny. Is incorrect. How about. Topher Grace. Is also incorrect for Saul. Adam Witt. Topher Grace. I uh, look like him, but no. The kid? I also had to go to Fanning. How about I Sam Levine? I also had to go Whoa. to Fanning. Looking for Isla Fisher. <laughs> Isla Fisher. <laughs> Isla Fisher. Never been <laughs> in an Ocean <laughs> movie. So I had to go to yeah. Fanning in this. Great question. Speaking yeah. of uh, now you see. Wow. Look at that. I genuinely I couldn't tell you. <laughs> all right. So now we go to our next question. Question three. They all missed on that one. So now we go to Hasbro. Okay. Who plays Harold Adinger? A corrupt CIA operative and government official in Transformers Age of Extinction. I love when you say that category because I always think the question is going to be like, what toy did Mark Ellis cry because he couldn't get at Toys R Us Isn't at it? age five? Yeah, I, 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 probably tons of them. I wept a lot in that store. Five, four, three. Remember the smell of Toys R Us? Oh, it's the best. Well, it depends. One. Uh, let's go pens down and let's go to Saul. Kelsey Grammer. Is correct. Yeah. Oh. Adam Witt. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I think this is good enough, right, Kelsey Grammer? All right. Yeah. And, yep. and Sam Levine. Did not have it. Oh, right. wow. Kelsey right. Grammer. 
Okay, so Kelsey grammar's the correct answer. So the two. Whoa. So right now, oh my God, nicely done. <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> even why I was trying to think of. Sort of on the chopping yeah, that's block. That's right. Amir Moses, Saul, and the kid getting that one. All right. So here's our next one, Mark. This is question four. That's right. It's in the category of Stephen King films, and your question for another probably much needed point is. What anthology film, based on the works of Stephen King, follows a kidnapped paperboy who tells three stories of horror to a suburban witch who is preparing to eat him? I mean, I guess you gotta kill time any way you can. Yeah. You know? Just try to stretch it. This is a very, very interesting predicament we find ourselves yes. in here. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're gonna start right there with Adam Witt. Tales from the Dark Side, the movie? Tales from the Dark Side, the movie is correct. Oh, yep. oh my the gosh. The kid. Didn't have it. Didn't have it, Sam? Did not have it. Amaru? I wrote something. I'm not showing it. Mm. He's not showing it, Saul? Is it that? Nah. Wow! Oh. Just Adam. So Mitt. look, and here, here's where we are. Sam Levine with one, everyone else with two. If everyone else hits it and Sam still hits it, he's out, but... Anything can happen here. You Anything can see a can lot happen. of eliminations. You could also see our very first overtime of the free-for-all. All right, here we go. Here is the this question. This is fun. DreamWorks Animation is the category. Which DreamWorks Animation film features the vocal talents of Matthew Broderick, Renee Zellweger, Patrick Warburton, and Michael Richards? you got to love Witt saying this is fun. Of course it is now when you can't be eliminated. Well, he might still he be able to be. Could he be. absolutely he, could. Everybody's on the chopping That's block. That's right. This is fun. Absolutely This could. is fun. He's right. And now the kid will answer, and we'll find out what happens. Five, four, three, two, one. Even though I can only see half of them, it looks like a lot of nervous faces up there. Let's go to the kid. Is it B-movie? It is B-movie. Oh. Sam. B-movie. He wow. had it. Amaru Moses. B-movie. Saul. B-movie. Adam. Planet 51, what am I thinking? Oh, oh this is interesting. And now. with that, Sam Levine and Adam Witt have been eliminated. He was not in fun a minute ago. Oh, wow, the champ is gone. Oh my goodness, what a turn of events here. Saul stays in the two IG guys are in there. <laughs> And they know that they're, oh. look at these two, oh oh. and they're going to be going out. So they, oh. And, and look, Sam Levine is out, but he's still got the shiny gold belt with him. <laughs> Sticking his belt home, and uh, so wow. now the kid and Saul and Amaru. All right, so that was something to see there as, wow, you, you would never have predicted that, that both Amaru Moses, Saul, and the kid are the three in there. All right, so a title still, a title holder stays, a title holder goes. I mean, we, we can't have too many belts at one time. We will turn it over to, he's got a big buckle on him, Ken Knapsack, to meet our next competitor. And now, the lucky number 13. You know me. I'm JT. Uh-oh. I You're think I know who it is. <laughs> Which one is it, though? T with version of me. T H E or T? All right. Paul Preston. Who is it? It could be Paul Preston. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Making his great turn to the free for all. Little label. J T. Look at J T. J T. The legend of the game. And has B for Meyer. And he goes right over to Meyer. He goes right over to Meyer. What did he? He's kind of wielding the cane as though it were a weapon. JTE not to be slept on no, in no, this no, free No, 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 no. He's had great performances in the free-for-all before. This is dangerous. All right, here we go. That was number 13. Who's 14? And now the competitor at number 14. making his free-for-all debut wow. here. And now he's coming in. What an unasked for event. No, it's like, but he's going up against JTE. He's got Amaru Moses. Amaru Moses has impressed the hell out of me so far, man. Amaru Moses is crushing up there. He's playing great, and every other competitor looking at Kaiser with yeah. fresh meat. They have wanted a shot at this guy for, for a, a long, long time. time. Absolutely. Look at JT just clocking him. All right. We're going to start with new releases. New releases. It is. All right. Steven Spielberg 
directed what 2021 musical remake that features 1957 New York City as the backdrop of the story? See all the competitors being very careful not to let Kaiser peer at their board. Right. They do not trust this. No, and why would you? But with their life inside, outside of the Schmodown, no. Five, four, three, two, one, starting with JTE. That would be West Side Story. You are correct. How about Moses? West Side Story. And Saul? West Side Story. Over to Kaiser. Wow. There's West Side Story. A point for Kaiser yeah. and the kid. West Side Story. There it is. All right. So everybody gets that one. And now we go to question two. All right. It's the world of sci-fi films. Channing Tatum plays Kane Wise, a genetically engineered soldier that is half human and half canine in what 2010s film? How is that not a hilarious comedy? It's, it's, it certainly sounds like it, and I think it is. It, like, it, it's, it, I wouldn't be shocked if Kaiser writes the Shaggy Dog here. I sure. really wouldn't. Hmm? I might go see that movie with you. Please do. I'd like to Five, see some. Put a camera four, on. Three, two, one. Pens down, Kaiser. Stop writing. Stop writing. All right, let's go to Amaru. Jupiter Ascending. Is correct. Jupiter Ascending. It's on the come up. Kaiser. Cyber Dog. <laughs> okay. I, I, I noticed I, the spelling. I take back telling you to stop writing. If you keep uh, writing hilarity like that, it's legal. I also had Jupiter Ascending. Okay, and JT. Uh, Jupiter descending. Oh, no! no. <laughs> no. Classic wonder by Jay! ATE -E drops the ball! Oh ATE -E drops the ball and he's tied with Kaiser! So this is incredible! Wow, Kaiser incredible. can really play spoiler to wow. ATE -E here now. Wow, JT had a free one there and he dropped the mm. ball. Mm. Alright, here we go. Here's the next question in the Brat Pack category. Which MCU actor plays Senior Jock Ian? who pours an icy on Gary and Wyatt in the film Weird Science. Yeah, you know, I mean, as the classic Motown song would indicate, what goes up must come down, right. Jupiter ascends, it's going to have to descend at some point, but that was not That's the not event the happening in it's the, the movie. sequel. Is there going to be a sequel? Never. Five, four, three. Dynamite drop in by Kaiser. Two, <laughs> one, and let's go to Saul first. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. is correct. Uh, Kaiser. Robert Downey Jr. Look at him go now, the kid. Robert Downey Jr. JT, please don't write senior. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> he got it. And Amaru Moses. The R, the D, and the J. Robert wow. Downey there it is. Okay. Amaru Moses is fantastic right now. Really playing well. And it is Kaiser and JTE tied at the moment as Suddenly we get to our next question. Kaiser now. Yes. Here we go. Mark? Your next question is in the category of the 90s, the 1990s. The decade that saw Kaiser with his first arrest. Your question for a point. Groups two. A former mountain rescuer is pitted against a group of criminals led by John Lithgow who have lost their $100 million stash during a plane crash in what 1993 action thriller? And if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If you have $100 million, you've got to have eyes on that football at all times. Yes, yeah, 100%. It's just not good criminal business to do it otherwise. No, sir. And we're going to count you down in five, four, three, two, one. Kaiser, you wrote that answer awful quick. Cliffhanger. It is correct. How about the kid? Cliffhanger. JTE. Sly Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Amaru Moses. Cliffhanger. And Saul. Cliffhanger. This is, this is incredible because where we stand at the moment is that if JTE and Kaiser both hit it, JTE will descend into the oh, next room. Oh, that was a low blow. So we are very excited. This is this is nuts. It's a nut. It's nuts. And here it is. Here's the here's wow. the question. The last question. Baseball's back. The wild card slice is baseball's back. Brendan Fraser plays Steve Nebraska, a young American with a consistent 100 mile per hour fastball and a perfect batting average opposite Albert Brooks in which 1994 comedy. It's a good film. I remember this. So yeah. where we are right now is if Kaiser hits it and mm -hmm. JTE hits. It, they both can, but then if any of the other three true. fails, it's then true. we could have a big that's elimination. That's true. Let's see what Five, happens here. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, Kaiser, and we go to the kid. Uh, the umpire? Is incorrect. Yeah, no How about JTE? That would be the scout. Yes. That is correct. How about Amaru Moses? I said the prospect. Okay, no. so he's wrong, so now we go to Saul. The scout. Oh, Saul oh. had it, and now Kaiser, What'd did he get? have it? What'd you get? 
JTE. Oh, <laughs> JTE oh, smells oh, like pee. Tiger oh, just said. Oh, that's on TikTok. That's streaming on TikTok. Saul almost eliminated. Saul almost eliminated everyone, but with that, Kaiser has been eliminated. What a round of drama. What a round of drama it is. He's a baseball fan. Ask a baseball movie question, and he can't pull the answer. Otherwise, wow. had Kaiser gotten that correct, Saul wow. would have pulled it and Franco and eliminated every other competitor. Yes, yeah, Saul, um, Saul almost eliminated everybody. Woo. So let's talk about the two IG guys right now. Yeah, really. Saul and Amaru Moses are having a hell of a free-for-all so far. The two of them are doing really, really well. All right. So now we get to Ken Napsok, who will bring in number 15. And now, the competitor who drew number 15. Oh, man. It's going to get interesting here. The plot thickens. Eggs Wait Kaiser. till you hear the crowd when when and competitor walks in. And there she and is. And from the dungeon, making her return to the free-for-all, Jenny the Machine. JTE, Amaru Moses, Saul the Kid, and now Janine the Machine. And this is going to be a wonderful table mark. That's right. It's certainly a cliffhanger, or as JT would call it, a cliff dangler to this point. <laughs> All right. Coming of age is where we're starting. Who plays the lead role of the 30-year-old Jenna Rink, who is editor of the fashion magazine Poise in the film 13 Going on 30? You know, Christian, uh, as I've approached middle age, I've realized that Poise isn't just a magazine. No? Is it's it just another a mantra product. in life? It's another product that you'll find very helpful. Five, four, three, two, one. And we go to JT. Uh, Jennifer Garner. Jennifer Garner is correct. Amaru Moses. Jennifer Garner. He's crushing it, Saul. Jennifer Garner. Wow. And Janine. Jennifer Garner. First points of her free-for-all. <laughs> Jennifer Garner. Kid had it too. All right, question number two now is in the category of black cinema. And the question, for a point of the following actors, who does not appear in The Best Man Holiday? Tay Diggs, Terrence Howard, Kevin Hart, or Morris Chestnut? So saw this in the theater. Did you? Great movie. Oh, yeah, that's right, for the little review show. Do you, you, know, do you, know, who, uh, you know who the, the running back plays for? Tell us after you've kind of stamped. The New York Giants. You're so concerned I'm not going to get it on time like right now. Five, <laughs> four, three, two. One all's well that ends well. Let's start with uh, Amaru Moses. I was hoping you'd throw Boris Kojo or something in there. Kevin Hart. <laughs> Is correct. How about? Kevin Hart. Wow, Saul had it. Janine. Kevin Hart. And the kid. Kevin Hart. JT. Kevin Hart. Oh, oh they all had they it. They all had it. So we're all tied up so far, and now we get to our next question. DC Movies. DC Movies. Here we go. Batman Begins and Constantine both saw a release in which year? You stinker. What'd I do? Well, you said DC Movies, but then you just shoved a new release. I did not write release date Didn't write them. Didn't write them. You read it, and that's you're oh, complicit. Sorry. Five. Four, three, two, one. After Harloff's misleading question, Saul. 2005. And Janine. 2007. Oh. Okay, that's incorrect. The kid. 2005. Yeah. Had it. JTE. Uh, 2007. He did not have it either. Amaru Moses. 2005. It's getting interesting wow. now. So Saul and Amaru and the kid get it, and JTE and Janine missed that one. All right, so now we get to question four, Mark. And it's in the category of adventure films, and here is your question for... One point. Welcome to the Jungle and the Next Level are subtitles to sequels in what adventure franchise? So very interesting scenario here too because you could see a multiple competitor elimination. Very true. All right. We're going to count you down here in five, four, three, two, one. And we're starting with Janine. Jumanji. It's a fun game. How about the kid? Jumanji. JTE. Jumanji. Amaru Moses. Jumanji. And Saul. Jumanji. Wow. That look is at, look barely Saul legible, but we'll give it to we'll you. We'll give it to you. All right. So, <laughs> so here's where we stand right now. JTE and Janine are tied. And again, we can have a very interesting round depending on the question here. And this time we get away from the Brat Pack and we go to the Rat Pack. Hey! All right. Here is your question. 
Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Dean Martin all appear in what 1984 comedy sequel? All right, you really took the beer and you shook it up, and now we're about to open the you can. You see what I'm talking about? This is, this this is going to be fun. This could be anything. Yeah. The rat who's going to get it? Here? Back when Vegas was Vegas. So what's going to happen? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, kid. Pens down, and we're going it's to you first. I do not have it. I put Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's I mean. Eleven is incorrect, JT. Yeah, I, no, I don't know this one. I wrote, uh, Kaser smells like poo. No. Uh, that is correct, but no. not <laughs> for this question. <laughs> yeah, Amaru. I just said Beverly Hills. That is incorrect. Cannonball Run 2. Correct. That is correct. Did Janine yeah, have it? Okay, so, so is the that. only one to get it correct. So with that, JTE and Janine have oh. been eliminated. Wow. wow. Saul and Moses are still on the table, and the kid now starting to make a play. But look, these these two, these are IG guys. These are IG you guys. You keep saying that, but I think that they have a oh, disdain man. for your comment because they're proving their breadth of knowledge in movie trivia. But what trivia. a story. What a story in general with these two. Amaru Moses and Saul. And, you know, you think about it this way, too, Christian, because we always give out, like you said, the MVP at the end, who is the most valuable participant in this free for You'd have to give it to Moses so far, but you Saul got is two right, early on contenders up there, Saul's right on his heels. Saul's right on his heels. All right, here we go. So we have just finished. We have just finished with number 15. So now we're going to find out who 16 and 17 are. And now, the competitor that drew number 16. I don't know that music. I certainly like it. I like it too. It's not happy. The, uh, I want to party. Our crew is getting into it. He's oh, the third reigning first league champion, making his movie trivia showdown debut, Travis Fish. Oh, the FCL champ defeated the flirt and flop for that title. Yeah, well, that must have been a tough hill to conquer. Yeah. He's here now with his FCL belt and his mohawk. What can he do in the MTS? We're about to find out. It's a good way to debut. All right, so number 17, this is it. Who do we got? And now, the competitor who drew number 17. It's also so I like that. Look, him and Very big Travis going to be hanging out. Who do we got? Down the freeway. Yeah. Oh, make oh, it to the freeway. It's got a deal breaker. Oh, deal breaker. You're coming. Ben Crawl. Now you know it. Yeah, well, what's, he's still exactly in high job. spirits, even after yeah. everything that happened with Roxy Stryer and the Stars. Great, over here. Got 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 kind of respect. Got got yeah, and we do have to ask uh, J Jacoby oh, yeah. Bancroft, what did you do to earn that belt? Uh, you don't want to know. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, okay. Well, we got the FCL champ up there. We got the reigning teams champion. We got two inner geeks and stars, and we have a belt from J.C. Penny. That's a good belt. Uh, old belt. Navy. But old your Navy. Pants old Navy. All right. So we're gonna start off, gentlemen. Here we go. We're gonna start with rom coms. Rom coms. Who stars as a woman who takes a trip to Ireland in order to propose to her boyfriend in leap year? See, I kept telling you, and you didn't want to listen. What? Instead of giving out championship belts, it should be championship suspenders. I did that already. You just, uh, it wasn't filmed. I didn't. It wasn't filmed. <laughs> it was like your Predator costume? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's go to Travis. I got Amy Adams. That's his first point in a free-for-all. Correct. Amaru Moses. Amy Adams. Saul, you don't look happy. Isla Fisher. It is oh. incorrect. Jacoby Bancroft. Isla Fisher. They also thought it was the Amy kid. Amy Adams. There Ooh, so Saul now and Jacoby, yep. but Amaru Moses still hitting it as we get to the <laughs> next question. <laughs> that, that sounded odd. Uh, your next category is the 1980s. Fan for a point. Here we go. Which 1981 thriller from Brian De Palma stars John Travolta and Nancy Allen and follows a man who captures audio evidence of an assassination? I, I kind of like that plot. You do? Yeah. I mean, Why do you I, like it so much? I mean, well, it's, it's cool. It's like you could hear it, but it's evidence. Is it really? We can't see it. It's fun. Five, four, three, two, one. I mean, a tragic event, but still entertaining. Amaru. I said the conversation. It is incorrect. So. Blowout. He had that uh, one, Jacoby. Blowout. Had that one. Blowout. And Travis. That's what this free throw is oh. going to be, a blowout. Uh, Travis. Travis. Look at Travis. Yeah. Travis and the kid now are tied with and the FCL champ putting up a fight here. And now we get to our next question in the realm of Star Wars. Uncle Owen was portrayed by Phil Brown in A New Hope and by what actor in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith? Oh, man, I love... 
love Star Wars. Yeah, I just do. wish people would stop talking about it. No, do people talk about it? <laughs> I, I just want people to write books about it, like our own Ken now. Oh, so. thanks. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Saul. Pens down, Saul. And let's see that answer. Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> uh, it's not correct, I, and I don't want to see that wow. movie. Uh, Jacoby Bancroft. Joel Edgerton. Uh, and the kid. Joel Edgerton. And Travis. Can't wait to see him in Kenobi. Joel Edgerton. And Moses. Joel Edgerton. They all had it except for Andrew Dice Clay. I might actually really want to see that. Out of hitting me. Blowout and Cannibal Run, to the IG guy misses Joel Edgerton. I am shocked. It's, <laughs> not, <laughs> it's not necessarily the miss, Christian. It's how far off target the miss <laughs> no, was. Close. Close. It would be a very interesting uh, Uncle Owen. It's I'll not like that. Dice was in another Star Wars movie. No. You just got him confused. Oh, you're right. I Oh, you're right. I thought I had him confused. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Next one. Your next. Uh, it would be a dystopian future uh, in that event. That's what this next question is about. Could be time travel films as well. And your question for a point. Of the following actors who has not appeared in the Terminator franchise, Matt Smith, Helena Bonham Carter, Bill Pullman, or J.K. Simmons? Interesting. Another one of those tricks up the writer's sleeve. You got two threes, two twos, and a one there in the middle with Saul. All right, they're scribbling down their best attempt, and we're going to count you down here in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we go to Jacoby Bancroft. Bill Pullman. Is correct. Oh, yep, and that's what I had. Bill Pullman. And Travis. Bill Pullman. I'm Rue Moses. Bill Pullman. Nailing it, and Bill Pullman. Saul. Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman. We'll, 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 it's it's part of. You can. It doesn't I, look like yeah, Pullman. we'll make it. We'll He's give got it Bill to, up there, we'll and we talked. We said time. Bill. We'll give yeah. it to him another. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. We but you're on Bill. thin ice, young man. Yeah. Yes, sir. If we hadn't said the name, one of the names, it was one of the options. So, you're fine. Damn, you're, you're doing great. So Travis, right now with four, Amaru with three, Saul with two. We have Jacoby with three and the kid with four. Saul is in trouble at the moment. Here is the question. It is a wild card. It is called the fourth entry in franchise. Fourth entries in yeah. a particular franchise. All right, here we go. What is the subtitle of the fourth Highlander film starring Christopher Lambert and Adrian Paul, which was released in 2000? All right, so here's Mike. Is that a tomato, tomato? Is it Lambert or is it Lambert? Whatever you want it to be. I think okay. it depends on how fancy you want to sound. Well, I want to please him. He's pretty intimidating, you know? Yeah, he is. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to the kid. Did you have it? I'm glad I'm sticking around regardless. Is it Highlander 2000? It is not Highlander 2000. <laughs> Let's try Travis. It's also not Highlander Blood Wars. No, it is not. And we go to Amaru. I don't think it's an MCU, but I'm pretty sure it's Endgame. It is Endgame. Ooh, that is ooh. correct. Ty so Endgame. Endgame. Whoa. Jacoby. Bloodline. Did Whoa. And with that, Jacoby, Bancroft, and Saul have been eliminated. Wow. But, the, but Saul did wonderful. There, what a performance by Saul. And a nice, a nice show of sportsmanship there, congratulating yeah. Amaru because they both were in the running for a long stay at the podium. But how about the FCL champ coming in and hitting four to stay in there? And Travis you have, looking good. You have Travis, you've got Amaru Moses, you've got the kid, and the kid's been in there for a while. He's done this before, <laughs> but the story right now is Amaru Moses. He's got that junior NBA clipboard, but he's not drawn up plays today. He's too busy getting correct answers. I mean, pulling questions from all different types of categories, and so it's going to be to see when we meet our next two competitors and that moment is now here all right ken who is number 18 and now the competitor who drew number 18 Making her season nine debut, Jesse Stacey Howard. Stacey Howard had some fun today. I can tell already. Which is a concoction there in her. So Stacy makes her way back. Very excited to have her back. And now the question is, who is number nineteen? Back to Ken. And now, the competitor at number 19! Oh, man. I know it. 
I'll let you guys see it when it happens. Oh, Representing he Swag making his season no debut, Adam the Coyote Colin. And look at Moses. Moses knows now. He looked. He even looked. He knew he's getting the competition is getting harder and harder. But look at him. He's still been in here. You cannot give him credit for what he's been doing so far. And we have all five competitors. The former champ is in there. And now we get to the questions. We start with the 70s. What year did Shaft's Big Score, directed by Gordon Parks and starring Richard Roundtree, release? I believe that's what the kids call a double entendre. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That means more than one thing. I know and it. And that other thing it means. Woo! Birds. Five. No. Very Thank inaccurate. Thank Four. You. Three. Two. One. And we will start with the impressive Travis. Got 1973. And unfortunately, that is incorrect. How about Amaru? 1977? Also incorrect. Sassy Stacy Howard. Uh, 1972. It is great to see you, and that is correct. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. She did it again. <laughs> she did it again. Adam Collins. <laughs> 75. Whoa! Oh, sorry. Oh, Stacy oh, Howard yeah. hits it. Wow! The Unbelievable. It's still there. It's still there. It's still there. The crowd chanting. <laughs> wow! Stacy Howard, massive, massive hit. <laughs> We're calling it. Stacy's the MVP. Oh my it's gosh. done. That's so awesome. Your next question is in the category of family films. Aww. And here it is for a point. What 1999 comedy? Written by M. Night Shyamalan, features vocal performances from Bruno Kirby, Chaz Palminteri, Nathan Lane, and Michael J. Fox. And I am convinced the writers are having fun at my expense. What a way for Stacey Howard to come back, though. Does the magic of Stacey Howard hit nobody else? She always has that magic pull always. sometime in a match. Usually she saves it for the three of the five pointer, mm. but in this case, mm -hmm. five. It's called Charisma. Four. Yes, it is. Yeah, Two. Mm -hmm. One. Wait, bye bye to us up here long ago. Amaru still has it. Stuart Little. That is correct. Stacy, do you have this one? Stuart Little. And Adam Collins. Stuart Little. Coyote's got it. How about the kid? Stuart Little. And closing us out with Travis. Stuart Little. All right. All right. So Stacy's still ahead of the pack here. And we get to the next question. And it is horror. Horror. Which actress stars in the films The Witch and Split? Just... I, I'm going to ask you to anticipate a moment that could potentially happen. Don't, don't, time. don't, don't say anything. It was at the announcer's jinx? It, it could be, it could okay. be a jinx, and it's, and it's not possible just yet. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's anticipating all opportunities. Five, four, three, oh. two, one. Sassy Stacy. Anya Taylor-Joy. Anya Taylor-Joy is correct. Adam Collins. It is Anya Taylor-Joy. How about the kid? Anya Taylor-Joy. And Travis? Anya Taylor-Joy. Close it out with Amaru. They all had it again, and so Christian, again, that scenario is starting to become more evident. Stacy still has three points. Everybody else trails her by a mere point. <laughs> your next question and your penultimate one in this round is from the category of the 2000s, and what a decade it was. Here's your question. What 2002 comedy about a kid named Gil Harris, who is bullied and moves to a new school, features performances from DJ Qualls, Eddie Griffin, and Eliza Dushku. All battling out, trying to catch Stacy here. That's right. If she doesn't slip up, then all of these boys are in trouble. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're going to start with the coyote. The new guy? The new guy is correct. The kid? Didn't have it. Didn't oh. have it. Okay, Travis. But I am the new guy. Did oh. have it, and you yep. are the new guy. Amaru, you were the new guy. Who's the the new guy? <laughs> and Stacy. Oh, I said bring it on. She didn't oh, have. Okay. Uh, all right. So here's where we stand now. Travis with three. Amaru with three. Stacy with three. And now Collins with three. And the kid needs to hit. This is this should be fascinating. Fascinating. Whatever happens here in this next question, anything can happen as we get to the next question here, Mark. It is action. Here is the question. Which is the subtitle of the second film in the Purge franchise and the first to introduce us to Frank Grillo's Leo Barnes? So, you know, for us up here, it's kind of like when you play baseball and you have a runner on first, runner on second. You have to anticipate where you're going to throw it. Yeah. A lot of possibilities in play, and it's all going to be decided in these next Anything five, happen. four, three, two, one. Seconds, pens down, and let's go to the kid first. Anarchy. Yep. Had it. How about Travis? 
Anarchy. Also got it, Amaru. I said election year. Is incorrect, Stacy. Anarchy. Had anarchy, did Collins. The purge anarchy. Okay, and so Christian, so with look that, at that. We have Amaru Moses and the kid have been eliminated. But Amaru yeah. Moses. Yep. Okay. Amaru Moses and the kid. Both played yeah. incredible. My loser is me. Aw, oh, <laughs> Stacey Howard giving a shot of the way up. But Amaru <laughs> Moses is right now is in contention for MVP, and the kid is wild. Yep. They both played tremendously, but Stacey Howard takes him out. The Coyotes in there. And how about Travis Fishburne, the FCL champion? is now still in there with two spots left. Wow, yeah, that was you incredible. Know, we started, we had, we had a lot of, uh, I'd say, carryover from one round to the next as we kicked off the free-for-all here, but now a lot of new competitors up there and a lot of shuffling going on. So buckle your safety belts. We're still almost halfway. So we got number 20 and 21 will be making their way in in just a moment here. And now the competitor. Who drew number 20? Uh-oh. These Gregorian Could be the champ. Chants. Could be the champ. Who's going to emerge? It's Corruption's music. Behind that curtain. Team shenanigans already. Whoa! <laughs> no. Wait a minute! She is the queen! Of corruption! What? All hail Shannon Barney! Wow. Wow. Shannon Barney, and that's her ex competitor. Okay, there. more beer up here, Christian. What look is this? this for it, it, yeah. it doesn't really help him much, but. Yes. You got, look, at, look at Collins. Collins and Shannon Barney. This oh. is going to get awkward. No, but it's not. She oh, gives him a hug. Man. She gives him a hug at Shannon Barney and Adam Collins. And even in, and look, Fred, Joy, kind of, or kind of, Shannon, I think Shannon's been in the parking lot with those cans for a little bit. They have enjoyed. Look, she's hugging everybody. She's having fun. Guys, All right. hold on before we start. Can you say something? It's a very important oh. question. Why am I here? I, uh, what's that? Why am I here? Because you're wonderful. I, well, <gasps> you're the queen. Yes. And you brought us beer. Yes. I did. Okay. All right, All right let's you. do this. Right. Ask me if I'm ready. Are you ready? Absolutely not. Good. All right, <laughs> let's get. Let's find out who else you're going to compete against, and we're going to find out with number 21. And now, the competitor who drew number 21. Oh, my God. Is this a flirt and flouse? The flouse? Uh, look at look at look at trash. They've seen each other before. Everybody's going crazy. Oh, that's not, the class. Class. that's not the flouse. Making his return to the free for all. That's one of the flouse. The beauty, yeah. Whitney Seibel. Oh, Whitney Seibel with a great new outfit. Look at the new look on Whitney. Yeah, the beauty himself. Closing out our competitor introduction. Whitney is dangerous. Whitney, Whitney, this is a dangerous table right Hi, now. Whitney. Oh, All right. So tired of that music. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. We're going to start with scores and soundtracks. Cool. Scores and soundtracks. Score. How many Star Wars films did John Williams compose the full scores for? All right, and so now you got to think it through. Mm -hmm. Easy part is you just have to write down one number. That's it. But coming up with that number. The question is, how be many? Trying. Five, four. Three, two, one. Travis up first. Nine. That is correct. Did Shannon have it? Oh, I was way under. I said five. Uh, it's incorrect, Stacy. I also said five. Uh, how about Adam? Nine. He got it. And Whitney. Nine. Okay. All right. So Stacy and Shannon miss. And here is the second question. It is in the category of mystery and thrillers. And here we go. Who plays the role of Dr. John Watson opposite Robert Downey Jr. in both Sherlock Holmes and Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows? We know someone involved with that production. We do. Will we see that person tonight, I wonder? Could be. Don't look him in the eye if you do. Oh. Very, very angry about it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're going to start with the Queen of Corruption. Queen of Corruption has no clue. Uh, she has no clue. How about Stacy? Receiving hairline king, Jude Law. Hey, don't talk about him like that. Let's go to Adam Collins. His full name is Judicious Law. I hope that's true. Whitney. His nickname is Jude. I am the law. Jude Law <laughs> and Travis. Jude Law. Hey, Jude. He got it. All right. So they all right now. So it is 
Travis with two. The Queen has zero at the moment. Stacy with one. And both Adam and Whitney have two as well. All right, here we go. Here's the animated question coming at you. Animated. The Land Before Time franchise follows a group of what kind of animals? All right, so everybody's scribbling furiously. Shan's still looking to get on the board here. Put some heat on Stacy, who in turn looking to put some heat on Adam, Travis, and the beauty. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're going to start right there in the middle with wine enthusiast Stacy Howard. Uh, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs is correct. How about Adam Collins? They're dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> Whitney Seibel? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> and let's go to Travis. I feel like there was a Tricentotaurus tops in there somewhere. Dinosaurs. And for her first points in the Schmodown. Oh my god, I was going to say there was a Triceratops in this too. They're dinosaurs. <laughs> 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 Am I done? Not yet. That, we still oh, got okay. some more. Two yeah. more questions. All right, <laughs> hang in. Here's the next question. Your next question is in the category of comic book movies. Comic book movies. And your question. What 2004 film based on a Mike Mignola comic book featured Ron Perlman, John Hurt, and Selma Blair? You think maybe Shannon might know some of these just by proxy of osmosis. That's what you mean. Maybe she's been through. Coaches many a lot of competitors. Games. Tons of them. A lot of really good ones. Really, the champ. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, starting with the coyote. Hellboy. It is correct. How about Whitney? Hellboy. And Travis? Born from hell. Hellboy. All right, Shannon. Hellboy! 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 Hellboy. Hellboy. They all had it. All right, so we now come down. This could get interesting also. This yep. is the final question so far. It is the wild card. And it is all or nothing. This is movies with 0% or 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> right. I love this category. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Cosine. Which 1931 Universal Monster Classic from director James Whale currently holds a perfect critical reception? You know, occasionally people feel like the tomato meter is inaccurate. And for that, don't worry, there's a podcast called Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. Oh, one of the best Wonderful in the business. Host. Check them. Five, what? four, and oh, three. Someone else does it? Two, one. Always got my back. Oh. Let's go to Whitney Seibel. Frankenstein. Frankenstein it is. Travis. Frankenstein. Oh, did Shannon. I would like to challenge the question because you asked me something that I didn't know the answer to. That sure. will be taken up with the judges Thank at a later you. point. Stacy. Said the mummy. And Adam Collins. Frankenstein. And Frankenstein. And with that, Shannon Barney has been eliminated. So Shannon comes in with the game. What? Going into the ring as a manager is tough. But she did it. And a lot of people, look, sometimes up. managers won't go near it, but nope. she she did it. And she put herself out there and she played. And she can now say she's been part of the free for all. Adam Witt. Kaiser, Shannon Barney have all been in there so far. That's right. She is a uh, firewoman who brought me a beer. All right. So Shannon is eliminated, and that would be number 20. Oh, excuse me. We ended with 21, so we're going to bring in number 22. And now, the competitor who drew number 22. The boss. Oh. Oh, not a lot of mystery here. Is back. No, well, you know it. There he is. MVP last year. Yeah. Played admirably. From the dead, DC 2021 Free for All MVP, Ben Levant Bateman. Bateman and Collins on the same table. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Ben Bateman, former movie trivia showdown champion of the world, various tournament winner, Free for All MVP last year. This could be interesting. Right, Travis giving him a little wave. Uh, the boss not very interactive with any of his fellow competitors. Not yet, not yes. yet. Oh, there he is. All right, okay. all right. So we're going to start out here with Ben Beatman on the table. We're starting with directors. Directors. Who directed 2018's Halloween and 2021's Halloween Kills? You see those movies? We saw, yeah, we saw the first one together. I, I did. I, saw, enjoyed it. I, I liked the first one. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Not the second one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the second one was great. Five, four, <laughs> way to sell. It. Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Pens down, Sir Fishburne. I'm seeing green. It's David Gordon Green. You certainly are correct. How about Ben Bateman? David Gordon Green. The boss is on the board here, the free for all. Stacy. I, I don't have it. Okay. Unfortunately, no. does the coyote. 
Halloween Kills does live up to its name. Okay, that, that, take it or leave it. Let's go to Whitney Seibel. From the director of Undertow, David Gordon Green. All okay. right, so only Stacey Howard missing in that one, but Travis still doing Good his thing. Good for all them. All right, here we go. <laughs> Your next category is <laughs> Sly and Arnie movies. Oh, God. Starring somebody named Sly and or Arnie, and here is your Sly question. It's like a comedy duo, Sly and Arnie. In the film Last Action Hero, which action sh star is shown to be the lead of Terminator 2 in the Jack Slater universe? You and I were quizzing each other about this movie off air. We were. We absolutely were. I remember. It. Look. And I you got the question correct. Oh, yes, and I will still say the yeah. same thing. I think ahead of its time. But, I mean, okay. Go ahead. Five, four, three, two. One. Pants down, and let's go to the big gun known as the boss. Sylvester Stallone. Is correct. Stacy. This was a guess. Sylvester Stallone. She yeah. had it, and did Collins. I want you to close your boots on your motorcycle. That's a good Stallone doing the uh, Terminator thing. Whitney. Uh, he has also the law, Sylvester Stallone. That is correct, and Travis. Sylvester they Stallone. All, all right, so there we go. All right. We had Quick to, question. We had to question three. Wizarding World. In how many films in the franchise did Monty Python actor John Cleese portray nearly headless Nick, the ghost of Gryffindor? <laughs> it's a very it sounds like a very John Cleese character. He, he's great in the film. Zany? You might even say nonsense. Is he a fan of? Uh, uh, no, I'd say Zany. Five, four, three, two, one. Pants down. Let's start with Miss Howard. Um, I said two. That is correct. <gasps> How about Adam Collins? <laughs> I overshot it. I said four. He oh. felt betrayed by the math. Whitney Seibel. Uh, I said two. Oh, totally Whitney got it. One. All right. How about Travis? Two. Got and it. Ben. ben the boss. I said three. Whoa. <laughs> so Ben the boss, Bateman, Adam Collins, and Stacy Howard all tied right now going into number four. All right. Yeah, so keep up with you, gods. we go <laughs> from the wizarding world and we pivot to historical epics and dramas for mm. one very important point. The question. Of the following actors, who did not appear in the 1990s war epic Gettysburg? Robert Duvall, Jeff Daniels, Martin Sheen, or Stephen Lang? You know, y y just what do you think? Those format of questions can't get any better. That's a good one. Good one, especially with yeah. the stakes where they are at the moment. That's right. Five, four, three, two, one. And we go to the Coyote. Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen is incorrect. How about tra let's go to Whitney. Uh, is Martin Sheen correct now? Uh, it is still, <laughs> unfortunately, incorrect. Travis? Mm. How about Robert Duvall? That is Whoa. the actual correct answer. Mm. Ben the Boss Bateman. Yeah, no, I wrote Robert Duvall. Whoa! Okay, uh, as it. Does. Wow, Crazy. Ben goes in the lead I now. I also wrote Martin Sheen. Okay, Whoa. all right. So, how about this? So now Stacy Howard, Ben saves himself. Stacy Howard and Adam Collins yeah. at the moment now are battling it out to see who survives with the last question here. Here we go. A24 movies. A24 movies. Here it is. What film from director Denis Villeneuve follows the lives of two identical men with two distinct personas becoming intertwined? All right. So, yeah. A lot of stuff that can happen. Take this one out. Sound it out in separation your... of our boards here, guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down. Were you starting with Whitney? Enemy is correct. Travis. That Imagine Dragons song. Enemy. Also correct. Ben Bateman. Upside down. Enemy. That is correct. And Stacy, did she have it? I didn't have it. Arrival. She did and not. Adam Does Collins have it. Enemy. Adam survives, and with that, Stacy Howard has been eliminated. Adam Collins surviving by the skin of his feet as Stacy Howard is eliminated. But man, what a battle she put up through the round she was in. Very impressive performance yes. there by Stacy. So she retreats, and now it's time to meet our next competitor. All right, so we hit number 22, and now we're going to find out who number 23 is. And now, the competitor who drew number 23. Back on vacation, it sounds like. It's very chill. For oh, that time! Oh, 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 oh. Making his free-for-all oh, debut! Oh, it's oh, high time! Benson is back, and what? Look, 
look, I've talked to Benzie. He's locked into the showdown right now. He wants to play. He, he said he really wanted to be in the free for all, and here he is. It's Doug Benson. It's high time. That's right. Benson <laughs> loves him some movie trivia and some other movie games. All right. Here we go, guys. In the category of Disney. What 1992 live-action Disney musical features performances from Christian Bale, Kevin Smets, Robert Duvall, and Bill Pullman? What's that second name? Kevin Smets. He's in that movie? Yes. Really? Did you not know that? <laughs> no. Yeah. What? Yeah, he's in it. What, what universe am I in? The real one. Five. Get to know your friends, Four. Alice. Come on. Three. Two. One. But if I pay attention to them, it takes the focus off me. Let's go to Travis. Newsies. <laughs> that is correct. How about Ben? Newsies. Doug Benson. Newsies. Ed Newsies. Adam Collins. Newsies. And Whitney. Uh, newsies. All okay. right. They all knew it. They all knew it. Kevin, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were in the movie Newsies. Your next question is from the category of the frat pack. I said frat pack. And here's the question. Frat. Neil Diamond has a featured cameo in this 2001 comedy starring frat packer Jack Black alongside Jason Biggs and Amanda Peet. So is that to indicate that Jason Biggs is not a member of the frat pack? No, I don't think he was allowed in. Can't put him in there? No. I Come like, on. I, they, the kid made love to a pie. Put him in. I like the guy. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down, and let's try the boss first. Orange County is incorrect. Doug Benson for a lead. Saving Silverman. That is the one. How about the Coyote? Saving Silverman. Also had it. Did Whitney? Oh, I said loser. Oh, and mm. Travis. I want to party with you, Neil. Saving Silverman. Look at Travis, man. Travis. So Travis yeah. with two. Benson with two. Collins with two. And Whitney and the boss both with one. All right, here we go. <laughs> Alien and Predator is our next category. Alien and Predator. Who directed? Alien vs. Predator. Really spelling that out. Alien vs. Alien chorus. Uh, you ever see that Saving Silverman? <laughs> I did. Very I funny. Is good. Very funny yeah. movie. Steve Zahn crushes it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and let's try high time Doug Benson. Oh, this isn't going to be right, is it? Paul Anderson? Mm -hmm. Candace. With a T in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's correct. P.T. Mm -hmm. Anderson? It, it, we we do need more specificity, unfortunately. Okay. Let's go to Adam Collins. It's Paul W.S. Anderson. Paul W.S. W. Anderson, w. as opposed to Paul Thomas Anderson. Yes. Whitney. Uh, Paul Whitney Seibold Anderson. Uh, it's not his <laughs> name, but that will accept yeah. that. How about Travis? One of the greats, Paul W.S. Anderson. And Ben Bateman. Paul W.S. Anderson. Yeah, All right. I got that W.S. in there. All right, so Ben ties it up there, and Doug Benson close, but... We yeah, now go Matt to Jeopardy answer. rules, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the next Sutton one. Has to say, who is? Yeah. All right, your next category, your penultimate one in this round, is from the category of spy movies. And the question. John Landis directed Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd in what 1985 spy comedy about the comic misadventures of two novice intelligence agents sent to the Soviet Union? It's like sending you and me over there. That wouldn't work out well. All right, so currently Collins and Fishburne in the lead by one. Five, four, three, two, one. But it does appear to be a puzzled coyote. Did you have it? I said armed and dangerous. It is not armed and dangerous. Does Whitney have it? It is spies like us. Spies like us. Travis. Spies like us. Wow. And Ben Bateman. Yep. Spies like us. And Doug Benson. But you're supposed to say it's spies like us. There it is. <laughs> All right, so, wow, interesting here. So you got like Travis with four. Spies He's going to be us. safe. You got Ben Bateman with three. Benson with three. Coyote with three. And Whitney with three. Could be so a big board clearing question here for Travis if he hits if it. If he can possibly. hit it. If he can hit it. And here it is. This is wild card. Shakespeare in the movies. He was dead long before movies became a thing. Here's the question. What is the first Shakespeare adaptation directed by Kenneth Branagh? Wow. You're really throwing the heat with that one. We're going to so. see what's going to happen. How about Travis here? 103 mile an hour fastball on the clock from Christian. Five, four, three, two, one. We are going to start with the beautiful Whitney Seibold. Henry V. That is correct. Did Travis have it? Henry V. He oh, did. Henry this five. is very interesting yeah. now. Ben Bateman. Henry V. And Doug Benson. Much ado about nothing. Oh, Adam, Adam, Adam Collins. Collins. 
Henry V. Well, okay, so with that, Doug Benson has been eliminated. Oh. And once again, oh. <laughs> Adam Collins <laughs> survives by the skin of his teeth. But he's doing it again. But Doug fought hard. And, but it's tra yeah. the story right now. You talk about these new guys, Amaru Moses. How about the FCL champ almost taking out the whole table right there? That's right. If, if it was just the one Paul Anderson out there making movies, it would have been a very different scenario. So, and so 24. Now, if I'm 24, I'm getting a little intimidated here. Are, are you now? I, I mean, look well, at what Travis has been doing. Maybe we should meet competitor oh. 24. Okay. And now the competitor who drew number 24. Music. It's really good. I don't know who it is. But sound very talented. From the oh! recording studio and into your heart, it's Alex the Melody Mazonia. Another FCL competitor and a, an SEN and Schmoville fan favorite, Alex Marzonia, making his MTS uh, debut here. That's right. That is correct. And so oh, look, he's pointing at the FCL belt. This, don't you? He's pointing at the FCL yes, belt. I would like that. Okay. All right. All right, everybody. So here we go. Here's the first question. We're going with biopics. Biopics. <laughs> sure. All right. Two eyes. What 1990s Western biopic features performances from Martin Cove, Michael Madsen, Jeff Fahey, and Bill Pullman? Okay, that, that's just rude. What I do. Alex Marzoni was born in 2012. You're going to ask him a question about... I did not write these. Decades and decades I, before I, I he was did, on I, this planet. I didn't write it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and let's go to Travis. Put wider. That is correct. Ben Bateman? Wider. Had wider. Alex? Didn't have it. How about Collins? I think Michael Madsen played Sam Elliott in that movie. <laughs> Wyatt Earp, and let's try Whitney yeah, Seibel. Uh, Wyatt Earp. Okay. All right. So, so everybody hits uh, Alex Marzoni misses on that one, and here's the second one. It's in the category of remakes and reboots. And here's the question for a point. Who plays the dual roles of Hallie Parker and Annie James in the 1998 Disney remake of The Parent Trap, directed by Nancy Myers? I didn't know Nancy Myers did that. I didn't either. Yeah. But now we do. Hell of a director. All right, so Marzoni is still looking to get on the board here. And really, Whitney and Travis anchoring. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. And let's try the boss. Lindsay Lohan. Accurate. Alex Marsonia. Lindsay Lohan. The kid's on the board. Look at that. How about Adam Collins? She knows who killed her. Lindsay Lohan. That is correct. <laughs> Whitney Seibel. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. And Full Travis. Loaded. Lindsay Lohan. Wow. This Travis kid he's is really, really, he's really doing something. So is Whitney. Yeah. All right. So now we go to Oscars. Now we go to Oscars. Who is the most recent actor to star in Best Pictures winners in back-to-back -back years doing so in 2014 and 2015? The name of the actor. Correct. Alva Resna. Yeah. Yeah. Big risk. Yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of tuxedo rentals. Don't take hard, boy. Probably. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens, Pens down, down please. Pens, Pens down. down, Whitney. And let's go to <laughs> Alex Marzonia. I believe it's Michael Keaton. Your belief is now law. That is correct. Coyote. Came to me too late. Okay, how about Whitney? Uh, I, I didn't even finish writing Bradley Cooper. <laughs> oh, well, Fair. I guess luckily it's not right at all. So let's go to Travis. Got nothing. Oh, wow. Okay. And Ben Bateman, you seem confident. Michael Keaton. Wow, right. so, so Bateman now pulls ahead <sighs> because with that with the pull there from Alex, he yeah. gets it and ties up the board. Yeah, all right. All right, we're going to progress now to the category of musicals. Oh, yeah. Was that in key, Alex? He wasn't even paying attention. He wasn't even paying attention no. to my sweet, sweet singing voice, probably for the best. All right, your question to the field. What year saw the release of the musicals Footloose and Streets of Fire? Kick question. off your Sunday shoes, unless you are, in fact, fighting in a street filled with fire. No, it hurts your feet. Well, yeah. it depends on No, how you should wear shoes. What if you protected your Christian, feet? Christian, put oh. shoes on. There are some people who have skills. Young man, right. five, four, three, two. Won the beauty, Whitney Sy. Oh, let's go to Adam Collins first for fun. 1984. <laughs> That's correct. Now, now you can go, beauty. 
1984. That is correct. How about Travis had 1984. Wake up, it's 1984. Ben Bateman, it's a pretty good album. 1984. That is correct. And Alex Marzonia. Got to cut loose. 1984. Wow. Marzonia right. came so, to play today. What is happening? So now, now, cut. now Ben Bateman has an opportunity here to eliminate everyone if he gets yeah. it right and they all get it right. So anything can happen here as we get to our last question in this round, and it's Star Trek. Star Trek is the answer. Here it is. In what, in what film will you hear Kirk say the line? I take it the odds are against us, and the situation is grim. Okay, so you said anything can happen here, which is correct, anything. except dancing. We are in a county that does not allow dancing because Ooh. it promotes the devil's well, that's music. A that's a different. Rock and roll. We're not in that county, Mark. That's a move. Five, four, Brother three, Lundster. two, one. Pens down, everyone. Get that big city kid out of town and bring in the beauty. Whitney side. Star Trek the motion picture. Is incorrect. Oh. How about Travis? I put the undiscovered country. Oh, he can miss. That is incorrect. Ben Bateman. Said Star Trek 6, the undiscovered country. That is also incorrect. Marzonia. Uh, Star Trek the undiscovered sea. <laughs> is also incorrect. Adam Collins. I also had the motion picture. Whoa! Oh, and with oh, that, the, the table is cleared. Only Ben Bateman survives. What? Travis oh. is gone. Oh. Alex is gone. Collins is gone and Whitney is gone. Look at the carnage. Star Trek generation. Oh. But how about oh. Travis Fishburne? Travis Fishburne has to be commended there for his run. What a play. I mean, really, you, wow. look, at, you look at Cybold, you look at Collins, and you look at Fishburne. Great runs there. And Alex Marzonia. The well, there you go. You there got the first is. one. And he cleared it with a miss. He cleared it with a miss. All right, Harlow. Thank you for that. <laughs> ben Bateman clearing the table, looking awfully lonely up there. But don't worry, Christian. We have plenty of friends coming in. There's a lot. He got four more friends coming in for the boss. And now, the competitor who drew number 25. What's that mean? It's Peppy. It's got the crew dancing. The crew's dancing, the audience is dancing. Although I thought I made a clear dance. Who's this? Illegal. Who's this? Who is it? The Andrew! Oh! And you know these two have history. Yeah, these they two do. have history. Mark, you want and to clear, I clear the tables. You bring in the first guy to ever do it. Oh, look at this! They're giving each other some love. It's Mark Andreco and Ben Bateman, a legend of the game, makes his return. Two table clears up there. And now the competitor at number twenty-six. of your mind it's video drew video drew a beloved competitor here in the schmodown she is always one that can take you out at any moment time it's video drew that's right could be a sneaky show of intelligence here with any one of these three competitors but we still need to meet two more 27 and 28 here is 27. And now, the competitor at number 27. Uh-oh. Can't we be. Know this. Is this Andrew right. Guy? Because we... It's very scary. Is it actually him, though? It's horrifying music. The stuff of nightmares. Oh, it's him! There he, he is! It's him! He's the 19 free-for-all champion! It's him! Making his season 9 debut! Wow! Dangerous! Jed Murrow! Five-time movie trivia showdown champion of the world! Defended the title many times! Former this? team champion! And look at these yeah. two! Oh, former teammates shaking hands! And look at his Andreco! Bateman, Video, Drew, Dangerous, Dan Merle. So who could be number 28? And now the competitor who drew number 28. Uh, let me stop you right there. <laughs> oh, this is going to get spicy and heated. He is the 
current and a kingdom champion of the world, Mike Bortella. Hello, Hello. Bateman and Merle have history. Kalinowski and Bateman have history. This is so, this is a crazy table, Mark. Very excited to see it. That's yeah, right. Real fast, I'd like yeah. to just cut in. Oh, I, I, I made a promise to myself this year in the free-for-all. You know, last year with the with the MVP, I had to do something special. If I did, I was going to reward myself. So, uh, PLD? Uh, oh, he has one of our favorite writers, PLD. Oh, all right. Oh, he's bringing it. He's bringing his it. Leveled up. Leveled up. There it is. I believe that's called overcompensation. <laughs> Well, that joke has been made before. You put me up here with two table clearers? What are you trying to do to me here? I'm sorry. Well, and also, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> it is true that both Bateman and Draco have both cleared. And Draco having that famous moment back in 2017. All right, A lot here. of famous talent up there. Let's get to the question. Here we go. In the category of Pixar, who voices 22, a soul with a dim view of life living in the great before in the film Soul? Downer question there. Should I wield this board? Yeah. yeah it's it's kind of like heavy. Using it as a weapon. It yeah, it seems so like. Yeah, you love it, Dan. All right, we're going to count down our competitors here in five, four, three, two, one. And may I say, welcome back, Andraco, or the Android. Do you have it? I do not. Um, Morgan Freeman? <laughs> is incorrect. Let's try Ben Bateman with his. Had a Tina Fey. Mighty board, that is correct. Video Drew? Ah, it's Jamie Foxx. And how about Dan Merle? Tina Fey, similar to both of them. But yes, I had Tina Fey. Tina and, and Mike Kalinowski. Mike Kalinowski. And I wrote Tina Fey as well. Look at that. So Kalinowski, Bateman, and Merle hit. And here's question two. All right, this is in the category of Marvel movies. Could be MCU, could be other Marvel fare. Uh, Mike, Marvel movies are based on comic books, in case you didn't know. What? And your question. Okay. For a point. Which 2017 MCU film became known for the line, he's a friend from work? Kind of like you. I think, oh, really? You're a friend from what? I guess we did meet that one. We're that's comedians. True. All right, that's fine. That's our job. Okay, take Just it. because we love it, still a thriving career. Why don't you Can take get it this one, Mike? What do you think? Five. I, four, I believe in you. Three. <laughs> I believe in you. Two. One. Let's put the pens down and get some answers, starting with Ben. I had Thor Ragnarok. That is correct. How about video, Drew? No, I did not have the correct answer. Okay, let's try Dan Merle. Yes, I had Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok by Kalinowski. Why are pants? these pants so tight? Thor Ragnarok. Very on point. Android. I wrote Dirty Dancing, but then I remembered it was Thor Ragnarok. That is <laughs> there correct. There you go. All right, so right now, Andrejko with one video, Drew could still catch up. Glasses in the mat. Why do you think I'm All right, here we go. Off. Lots of practice. Sports. Sports is the next one. What 2015... Oscar-nominated boxing film features the tagline, Your legacy is more than a name. Well said. Thank Whatever you. mystery movie you are. Oh. All right, so you think maybe, do I know what Oscars were given out that year? Do I know taglines? Five, four, three, two, one. Starting right in the middle with Video Drew. Oh, that's fun. Um, I said Creed. And you are right. Oh. How about Dan Merle? I said Creed. And Mike Kalinowski. I didn't have it. I put the fighter. Okay. Right. How about Mark Andreco? Whoa. Creed. Had it. And Ben Bateman. I said Creed. So the former team partners with the lead here both have three. Andreco with two. Kalinowski with two. And Video Drew gets herself on the board there with one. So now we get to the fourth question. That's right. That is in the category of We Love You, Scott Mance. Movie release dates. Yes. And here is the question for a point. What year saw the release of the third Iron Man film, the sixth Fast and Furious film, and the second Hunger Games film? All right. I'm giving you a ticket to go see a movie. Which theater are you walking into? Any one of those franchises you want. Um, You're seeing Hunger Games. Yeah, the second one. I would. He loves them. I would. Five. He read them. Four. Did. Three. Two, one. Probably the last book you read. Pens down. Let's try Dan Merle. I said lucky number 2013. Lucky number 2013 is correct. Mike Kalinowski. 2013. Had it. Android. An absolute miracle. 2013. Nice. And Ben Bateman. 2013. Video Drew. Almost went for the perfect zero. I said 2012. 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Video Drew does not get the point. Four to four to three to three to one. Well, it looks like. Okay. So know what's going to happen in the end of the round, but we will ask this question here on streaming movies. Who plays the lead role of dim-witted, delicatessen employee, Hubie 
Dubois in Salem, Massachusetts, who was ridiculed by almost the entire city in Hubie Halloween. That is some fun alliteration. Dim-witted delicatessen. There was a few funny moments in this. Actually, th there are. Just a few. I watched it. Just a few. Laugh out loud, knees laugh. Yes. Five, <laughs> four, three, <laughs> two, one. Pants down. Let's start with Mr. Kalinowski. Uh, is it Adam Sandler? Almost as good as your Michael Caine, that is correct. Mark Andreco. I will not bore you with that source. Adam Sandler. <laughs> All right, let's go to Ben Bateman. Best film ever is The Wedding Singer, but we are talking about TV Halloween, it is Adam Sandler. The video drew for a point. Oh, yeah, I said macro data refinement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the severance reference. Great, great work, video drew. Thanks. Let's go to Dan Murrow. Shiba de doo, Adam Chen. All right, video and drew with Ryan. that, video Ryan. drew has been eliminated. Thank you to video drew. I was written to see drew and Mark Andrico, Ben Bateman, Dan Merle, and Kalinowski for Legends of the Game at the moment on the table still. And we get to number 29. And now, the competitor who drew number 29. And Ray Turner to the free for all and PG Peggy, Peggy. Gubbins! PG Peggy Gubbins, what a fan favorite she's become. People love Peggy Gubbins, Ben Bateman giving her that big handshake, patting her on the back. And now we have our table as we get into it, Mark. Here we go. Movie quotes. Movie quotes. Which 1987 film from director Oliver Stone featured the line, greed, for lack of a better word, is good? All right, so again, video drew with a great reference to the show Severance. Have you seen it? I, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Yet. I almost told you I told you that already and realized we were off air. Five, four, three. Way to show him the wizard behind the curtain. Sorry. Two, one. Pens down. Let's go to our own wizard, Mark Andreco. Abracadabra, Wall Street. Wall Street, and he even performed a little trick for us. Ben Bateman. Money never sleeps, Bud Fox. And welcome to the podium, Peggy Gubbins. Wall Street. Had it, Dan Merle. Wall Street. And Mike Kalinowski. Wall Street. Very Gordon Gecko like himself. All right, so we move to your next category, which is LGBTQ films. Don't look at me. And your question <laughs> for a point is... What 1996 comedy follows a gay cabaret owner and his drag queen companion who agree to put up a false straight front so that their son can introduce them to his fiancé's family? It's all tied up thus far. That is what you call a premise. Yes. All right, ones across the board here looking to make those ones into twos. That sounded disgusting. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're starting with The Boss. The Birdcage. Is correct. PG. The Birdcage. Add it. Dan Merle. Birdcage. And Mike Kalinowski. Birdcage. Mark Andreco. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I got this wrong? <laughs> the Birdcage, Never. based on the French film La Cage Folle. All right. All right. Two all around the board, and here's the next one. Comedies. <laughs> <laughs> got it again. Right. This uh, guy. This guy. Shut your... Of the following films, which did John Hughes not write? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, 1994's Miracle on 34th Street, Only the Lonely, or The Great Outdoors. You said National Lampoon's, and I was hoping you were going to say Loaded Weapon 1. Underrated gem. I saw that somewhere circling around. Oh, there. is it in the dock? Somewhere. Those writers, rascally rabbits, never can tell what they're going to do. But I'm pretty predictable when I say five, four, three, two, one. Gonna kick things off here with Peggy. I guess the great outdoors. It is. Whoa. You said only the lonely. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> only the lonely is the answer written and wagered, and it is incorrect. 
Yeah. Let's yeah. try Dan Merle. Wait, I hold on, wait. She, she 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 said only the lonely. Yes. She said that, only the lonely. That is correct. That is correct. Oh, that is okay. correct. That is correct. She said it. So we're just. She did. So we're gonna award her the point. She yes. said the wrong thing, but she wrote. I, it was a brain fart. We're gonna give it to her. It happens. Dan. Yeah. I don't know what the right answer is, but I think I got it wrong because I said the great outdoors. Uh, <laughs> that, it, it, it's correct in my head, Candid, but um, unfortunately, it's actually. Fix it in right. post, guys. Fix it in post. All right. Let's do Mike Kalinowski. I'm not gonna say it because I got it wrong as well. Miracle on three fourths. Uh, uh, Mark Andreco. I believe it was written by Christopher Columbus, Only the Lonely. Yes. That is correct, I'm told, and Ben Bateman. Only the Lonely. Wow. Yes. All right. So Dan Merle and Peggy now playing up here. But that was that we've never had a moment like that. I'm glad we had it. So right. Peggy, one too many hits to the head on the gridiron. <laughs> All right. Here's the next one. And this is in the category of speaking of funny stuff, SCTV alum. And the question. Andrea Martin plays Phyllis. Phil Carlson, opposite Margot Kidder and Olivia Hussey in what 1970s slasher classic? All right, and so a lot of shenanigans there, but the yep. category was comedies. What do you expect? Having a little bit of fun and a lot of competition. Indeed we are. Fifth edition of the free for all. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, pens down, and we're going to go to Dan Merle, who I am told is dangerous. I said Black Christmas. He is dangerous indeed. He's also correct. How about the killer? Nope, my bloody Valentine. All right, Mark Andreco. I said the other one, the house was already row. How about Ben Bateman? Yeah, I didn't have it. How about Wow. Frankie? No idea. Whoa. <laughs> All so, right. So after that, Mike Kalinowski now ha is down by one. Everybody else has three. And here is the question. Could get very interesting. The wild card slice, Schmodown stars in the movies. I love this category. Which Schmodown star appeared as the character Gracie in the 2010's horror film Satanic Panic? All right, and so how well do you know your fellow competitors, maybe yeah. even some crew members, possibly even somebody up here at the answer desk? Five, four, three, two, one. In a question that could see a lot of changes to those podiums, let's start with the killer Mike Kalinowski. Bonnie Somerville? That is correct. incorrect. Mark Andreco. My former teammate, I believe, the lovely and talented Clark Wolf. That is correct on all fronts. Ben Bateman. Yeah, I said Clark Wolf. And Peggy Govins. Clark Wolf. Whoa. Dan Merle. I'm a terrible friend because I said Roxy Stryer. Oh. Well, well, with that, Mike Kalinowski has been eliminated. I can't. I think I forgot. Right. Clark, Clark Wolf once again taking out Mike Kalinowski. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at you. Had to do it. Look at you. All right. And so now that is one competitor down. And so we're now going to meet our competitor numbered 30. And now the competitor who drew number 30. Got a merchant. We have to hear it in a second, I guess. free-for-all debut, he is a former FCF champion of the world, Slick Nick Harley! So Slick Nick emerges and uh, he's greeted with booze, Christopher. Yeah, well look what he's done, debut. he turned on his partner earlier, he joined the Stars, he's now teaming up with, with Mr. Irwin. Said, look, the FCL presence so far has been impressive and this was the first FCL champion but he's up there against some MTS legends and Peggy Gubbins has just done a really phenomenal job in that last yep. one knocking out Kalinowski as well so this is a tough table. Big score I just want to take a moment to say uh, yes, no. Christian very nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, Mark Oh, <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't know what I, what'd you do to him. I don't know. I right. barely know the guy. All right. Well, here we go. Maybe that's why he's upset. Let's start with Westerns. John Avildsen directed Luke Perry and Renee Zellweger in what 1994 Western biographical drama about a bull riding champion? I'll be partner. Let's get this wagon train a moving. I don't think that's the movie. No. Nope. No. Took a shot. That's why I'm up here. Not up there. Dressed as a character. One day, once upon a time, Five, you were good. Four. <laughs> Took that guy to the limit. Two. One. Pens down, and let's go to the android. I believe 
It's how long Bateman takes to finish. Whoa! Eight oh, seconds! Oh, what a low gosh. blow. Bateman, yeah. wow. Wow. Well, uh, I was so distracted thinking I wrote the bull rider. Oh, okay, no. how no, about Peggy so Gubbins? Didn't have it. Didn't have it to Dan. My my answer is one better than Mark's because I said seven seconds. Oh, oh no, that's doesn't... even faster. How about Slick Nick, who hates me for some unknown reason? I don't have it. No, he okay. doesn't have it. Okay, so only Mark Andreco hits it on that one. All right, right, next one. Mark Andreco, known for his love of bull riding films. Yeah. We move to your next question, and that is in the category of musicians in film. They rock, they roll, and occasionally they act. Here's the question. Tim McGraw plays the role of a drunken, overbearing father named Charles Billingsley, opposite Garrett Hedlund in what 2004 sports films? You're not, not Peter Billingsley. Drunken, overbearing father. Is that how your family would describe yeah. your dad? Yeah, no, I don't. I hope not. <laughs> they are on hand. Let's bring them out. Five, it's four. It's the next competitor. Three, two, one. If it's Pixar, they do pretty well. Pens down, and let's go to Ben Bateman. I had Friday Night Lights. And you are correct. How about Peggy Gubbins? I much prefer the TV show, but Friday Night Lights. I much prefer Friday Night Titans, but let's go to Dan Merle. Clear eyes, full heart. I might lose Tandrako again, but I did get Friday Night Lights. There it is, and Slick Nick. Friday Night Lights. All right. And Mark Andreco. I wrote The Spirit. No, I'm kidding. Friday Night Lights. Uh, yes, Andreco does it again. <laughs> I think you mean The Spectre. It's, I think you mean The Spectre. Bro. Yeah, exactly. All right. Here we go. This is Middle Earth. Sylvester McCoy from Doctor Who plays the role of a wizard known as Radagast the what? All right, so you're in Middle Earth. You yeah. walk into a bar, a bunch of different types of people in there. Who are you talking to first? You talking to a dwarf, an orc? In a setting like that, yeah. a dwarf. I want to go get. A you're not going to the wizard? No, maybe a hobbit. Just share a pint or something. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Peggy, and we need your answer. Uh, I didn't have it. Didn't have it. This Dan. I'm glad we could hit this note here on Free For All. Uh, Brown. That is correct. How about Slick Nick? Nerd. That's <laughs> uh, uh, inaccurate. How about Mark Andreco? How I feel with Middle Earth questions. Befuddled. Befuddled oh, no, is also it, right? not accurate. Uh, ben Bateman. The Brown. Oh, he okay. got it. Nice. Okay. So Dan Merle, Mark Andreco, and Ben Bateman all have it. And now Nick and Peggy need to play some catch-up. All right, here's the next one, Mark. They have the chance to do just that in your next category, wrestlers in film. And the question is, at the beginning of Blade Runner 2049, which wrestler plays Nexus 8 replicant Sapper Morton, who Ryan Gosling's K retires? See that movie? I did. Yeah, they, they, they ain't it. talking about the gold watch kind no, of retirement. No, no, no. I like this. All right, so we are playing some catch-up here. At least Peggy and Nick need to play some catch-up. Here we go. That's what the mama tomato said to the baby tomato. Catch up. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're going to go to Dangerous Tanmo. Dave Batista. Dave Batista is correct. Slick Nick. The animal, Dave Batista. How about Mark Andreco? The Beast Raban, Dave Batista. <laughs> and Ben Bateman. That goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. Dave Batista. And Peggy Gubbins. Hadn't seen it. Didn't, didn't have it. Didn't see okay. the movie, didn't have it. All right, First so day. after after that, we have Andreco with three, Bateman with three, Merle with three, and Nick with two. So this still has a chance. Peggy has a chance to take Nick out mm -hmm. if Nick misses and she hits. All right, here it is. Courtroom dramas, legal thrillers. Michael Mann directed Al Pacino and Russell Crowe in what 1999 Academy Award nominated film about a whistleblower in the tobacco industry? You know I can't whistle. Is that true? Can't do it. I can't Been wink. Been trying it for I, a long time. I can't time. wink my right eye. You can't wink your right eye? No, I can only wink Try my it. Left. Let me see it. No, no, the other one. I'm wink trying. your right eye. It's so creepy seeing that. It's Five, weird, especially with a mask. Four, on. three, two, one. And we'll start with a big answer here for Slick Nick. The Insider. He had it. Big pull there, Mark Andreco. The Insider. How about Ben? A favorite of his former teammate, The Insider. Peggy Gubbins. It's been fun, guys. It's been, it's been great seeing you, Dan Merle. The insider. And insider. with that, Peggy Gubbins has been eliminated. So Peggy put up a fight, stuck around for a round, but she got eliminated. And Slick Nick stays with it. All right, so here is the next competitor. It's number 31. And the competitor that drew number 31. Oh, it's going to get interesting oh, now. 
Is this him? You remember when this came out of Spectacular, the way the audience went nuts. An all-time great moment in Showdown history. And now, it's free-for-all season. And he fights his way back. This is his first one back. Since 20... There he is! Oh, he is a punk! Ovation for Smith. Nick Harley not even clapping. Look at Nick Harley. Nick Harley not even giving any respect to Kevin Smith. But look, there's some respect here from the crowd loves him. Ben Bateman. Ben Bateman, former dungeon mate, giving yeah. him a hug. Look at this. Oh, everybody here. Every <laughs> except <laughs> Nick Harley. Hug. Except Dan Nick Harley. Harley. With the greeting, Harley just standing there staring at Kevin. When he Can I say him. something? Certainly. Look. Looking at this table, I know I'm only going to be here for about two and a half minutes. So <laughs> I got something to say to you, Alice. What are you doing? Well, what do I do now? So you don't know I'm in Newsies, I understand that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. But in my darkest times, you sent me a book about your father who was a fighter who fought the same battle that I did. You also gave me this hoodie to wear at all my treatments, which I did. I rocked it proudly. And I said that when I came back, when I was back on my feet, when I was back on top, I would rock your colors proudly. And here I am, no better way to do it than the free-for-all. So I'm here. Shout out to the tailgaters outside. Let's do this. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Glad to be back. I called him and pitched him some jokes I was working on. <laughs> I'm going to feel so guilty a little bit. He went his like, own really way. Really guilty. Yeah. I, uh, I won't. All right. Here we, all right. Let's, let's start and let's give it a shot. Here we go. Which Pirates of the Caribbean films feature performances from Jeffrey Rush, Kevin McNally, Sam Claflin, and Keith Richards? Yeah, Smets with that beautiful hoodie with my logo on it. You know, mm -hmm. there's this new rock and roll band, Van Halen. They have a very similar logo. I think I might consider legal. You action. should get one of those. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and let's start with the Android. I put on Stranger Tides. Parts of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides is, is correct. Correct. Wow. There it is. How about Ben Bateman? I wrote at World's End. And Kevin the Smasher Smets. Let it be noted that Ben Bateman missed the question I got right. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. How about Dan Merle? I prefer to say Sam Claflin. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger <laughs> right. Tides. And Slick Nick. No. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I think he didn't get it wrong. He's declining to answer the question. Yeah, all right. So that was uh, a special. Yeah, you're at, we're at fantasy now. All right. Fantasy is the next category. And the question for a point. Which of the following actors does not appear in the film Wrath of the Titans? Toby Kebbell, Bill Nye, John Hurt, or Danny Houston? Great question yeah. here. So these are more, uh, at least, inner geekdom feeling movie questions. I mean, it's fantasy, or, uh, so I mean, well, let's, let's hit the first one. Coincidentally for Smets. Yeah, well. Five, four, three, two, one, and we're going to start with the boss. I said Danny Houston. That is incorrect. How about the Smash? I had that too. Incorrect, Dan Merle. Let's try John Hurt. Your try is ratified. That is correct. Slick Nick. John Hurt. That oh, is Nick correct. Is. And John Dark Draco had it. All right. So right now, only Ben Bateman needs to get on the board here if he wants to try to stay in this thing. And we get to Monster Movies is next. Here it is. What 2015 horror film from director Michael Dirty features Tony Collette, Adam Scott, and MJ Anthony? Ben Bateman trying to hang in there. He's putting together a nice little run here on the question podium. Yeah. As is Dan Merle and Mark Andreco. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, right down the middle with Kevin Smith. Finally going to get it right this time. Don't tell Harry. <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> Uh, three years ago, yes. Now, not so much. Dan Merle? Is it Krampus? It is Krampus. How about all of our Krampus? Nick Hart. Krampus. There it is. The, and the Android Andreco. Oh, I've been running. I got a Krampus. I like what you did there. Ben Bateman. Krampus. All right, so board. Bateman gets himself on the board, tying himself up with the Smets now. It's tied, buddy. And this is question four. All right, this category is in the 2010s. Movies released in the category of 2010s. Here is the question. Greta Gerwig co-wrote and starred in what black and white dramedy opposite Adam Driver about a struggling 27-year-old dancer? All right, so getting a little tense there because yeah, Bateman, Bateman and Smets are stumped right now. Five, four, 
Three, two, one. Pens down, and let's start with a confident-looking Dan Merle. Uh, oh, good acting. Is it Francis Ha? You should be confident, because that is correct. Slick Nick? <laughs> as many laughs as you get, Mark. Francis Ha. Wow, wow. that's really a, actually coming a good you. word for a laugh. Uh, Mark Andreco. Francis. <laughs> ah, I like uh, what you did there. Ben Bateman? I didn't even have anything. Kevin Smets? I just, everybody's so tall up here, I got nothing. <laughs> All right, so where we stand right now is that Andreco, Merle, and yeah. Harley are safe. This is a battle between Bateman and Smets. It's one on one right now, and they each have one point. If they both get it, gonna they're going to let the dungeon, buddy. Here we go. All right, here is the last question. Here's the last question. All right. The question is a wild card. It's Boston based films. From Boston. And here is the question. Which of the following actors does not appear in the 2007 crime thriller Gone Baby Gone set in Boston? Ben Affleck, Casey Affleck, Ed Harris, Amy Ryan. Last time you were in Beantown? It's been a long time. Yeah. We were supposed to go for a live event. And and to Claire, you like the city. It's oh, just yeah. The, the baseball just, team the there. Teams. You're yeah. not a huge fan of. <laughs> I hope I'm right. You're Still knocking me out. I know you are. I don't know. We're gonna One, we out. could uh, see a couple big knockouts here. Let's start with Slick Nick. Brian Cranston. Is uh, he very, very inaccurate. Let's try Mark Andreco. Ben Affleck? Yep. There it is. How about Ben Bateman? Ben Affleck. And Kevin Smets. I had Ed Harris. Oh, oh Dan Merle. Ben Affleck. Sorry, P.I.E. Wow. with that, Kevin Smith has been eliminated. Almost takes on so happy to be back. Bateman survives again. Jeez. This is what he did last year. And he's yeah. in there again. And this time, Smith almost took him out, but he was able to survive. And so. very kind words from uh, from uh, from our buddy Kevin Smith. Uh, thanks for uh, rocking the hoodie there. We appreciate you and your fight. And he is out of the free-for-all, but still... Firmly lodged. We're getting towards the hearts. end here, Mark. It's number 32 coming in to try to take out either Bateman. I mean, that's, a, that's, really that's, a, that's hard. And look, and look at Nick Harley. Nick Harley's in there with some legends of the game, legends of the free-for-all. and he's, he's holding his own so far. He's brand new. He's only a sophomore in the league thus far. All right, Ken Napsok, who we got? And now the competitor at number 32. You know what? You're in the way. Paul Frosta. From the fan favorite, and returning to the free for all, T A E B Paul Frosta. Paul Frosta. Yeah, T H E. T H E has his own theme now. It's a good one. All right, so Paul Preston it has made it to the arena, and now we start up. Here we go. We're going to start with sequels and prequels. What 2010's sci-fi sequel features performances from Killian Murphy, Michael Sheen, and Bruce Boxleitner? Paul Preston, looking like a former Marine who's about to handle some street toughs outside of a local convenience store. I'm shocked that he fist-bumped Ben Bateman. He doesn't like Ben Bateman. show sportsmanship occasionally. I guess. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we're starting with the Android. Not a clue. Uh, just the big Riddler question mark. Ben Bateman. I wrote Twilight Eclipse. Uh, that is incorrect. How about Paul? Tron Legacy. There it is. Dan oh, Merle. Yeah. I had a big nothing. <laughs> All right. It's like Nick. Pass. All right. He doesn't want to answer the question. No, he doesn't want to. I like the way I look. He's very confident in his, in his not knowing things. Yeah, well, he can maybe pick up a point here with your next category, which is in crime films. And your question is. Who plays the lead role of Hercule Poirot in the 2017 adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express? This one they seem to all know, but Paul Preston has himself a one-point lead thus far on the whole table. That's, That's right. always what you got to do. It, 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 it is not hard of a game if you keep answering questions. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going to start with that giant whiteboard of Ben Bateman. I got Kenneth Branagh on me. Uh, that, that looks up that. That is uh, correct. How about Oscar winner Kenneth Branagh? Paul Preston gets it. Dan Merle. I wish Bibbs was here for this. Sir Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> Sir Lawrence Branagh is correct. Slick Nick. Oh, what a great writer Kenneth Branagh. Wow. And Mark Andreco. Were you slamming Kenneth Branagh's writing? <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> okay. Kenneth Branagh. So we All see right. a new rivalry here starting right. between the Android yeah. and, and Slick Nick. All right. Here it is. Question three. It's Hasbro. 
Which Breaking Bad actor plays the role of Zordon, the Power Rangers mentor and the former Red Ranger in 2017's Power Rangers? Yeah, here's the thing. I don't think anybody's doubting Slick Nick's uh, movie trivia acumen, but my question is, does the guy like movies? I mean, it's, look, he's been I in there. I think he enjoys them. Look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't push him. Five, he doesn't like you already. Four, three, two. Well, I'm a nice guy. We'll squash well, I agree sure. with you. Let's go to Paul Preston first. Brian Cranston? That is correct. Dan Merle. I can't wait to see what Nick says. Brian Cranston. He did right, Brian Cranston, previously. Did he do it this time? I guess I was a little early, but Brian Cranston. All right, well, you're at the party now. Android. Brian Cranston. And Ben Bateman. Brian Cranston. Got it. All right, so once again, Paul Preston up by one. It's three with the rest of the table with two. All right, we'll so let's go to one. your penultimate question here with Paul Preston in the solo lead. Three. The rest of the competitors have two. Your category, Stephen King. And the question, Mike Flanagan directed Carla Gugino and Bruce Greenwood in what 2017 psychological horror film for Netflix? Big fan of that Carla Gugino. I, got, I never could say her name right, but I thought you were going to say you're a big fan of my Netflix account, which you pop up on quite frequently. Not that one, no. It's HBO Max. It's a couple of them. No. It's a few. No. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's go to my Bruce Greenwood, Dan Merle. This is Gerald's game? It is Gerald's game, and what a weird, twisted game it is. Uh, Nick Harley. Gerald's game. Wow. Android? Gerald's game. Dan's hated rival and the boss Bateman. Gerald's game. Oh, and Paul I... Preston, did he have it? Gerald's game. He wow. got it. All right, so here's where we stand. Uh, Paul, I've seen this movie before. Paul Preston twice. has an opportunity. He could do it. Paul Preston has the opportunity to clear the table. If he hits this one, this is the fifth question. This is DreamWorks Animation. Will Arnett voices The Missing Link, and Hugh Laurie voices Dr. Cockroach, Ph.D., in what 2009 film? So is it in Hugh Laurie's contract every character he plays has to have a Ph.D.? Yes. Did you know that? It's a good contract. It's a true, that's a true story. Did you really know that? You're messing with me. I am messing with you. Almost bit. I almost bit. Five, four, three, two, one. You can see the fear in my eyes yes. for a second. Pens down. Let's go to Slick Nick. Monsters versus aliens. They were fighting them. Android. Madagascar. Didn't have it. Did Ben the Boss Bateman? It said Peabody and Mr. Sherman. Okay. Let's see. Paul Preston didn't, didn't have, have it either. It. Dangerous Dan Merle. Monsters versus aliens. Oh, and with that, Mark and Draco and Ben Bateman have been eliminated. Paul Preston, Nick Harley, and Dan Merle survive, but how about Ben Bateman staying in there and the return of the android? That's a story all in itself. The android is back. That's official. I have it around. This is not just a one and done. The android is back, ladies and gentlemen. Very excited for that. But Paul Preston, Dan Merle, Nick Harley, and now we await our next competitor at number 33. And now, the competitor who drew number 33. Swag, swag. Yeah, we know the faction. Yeah. Who's going to emerge? Swag having an interesting start to their season. Not too bad. And look what Amaru did already. MVP contender. Oh, that's sweet thing. Making her free for all debut. Sweet. Lee Wiggins can play. Oh, that's right. And Lee Wiggins can play. Walk. I don't know if you noticed his shirt yet. Handbook for the recently deceased from Beetlejuice. She's looking to retire some of the players currently up there. Very possible. She's got to do it against a couple heavy hitters now. And then we have one more person here coming in at number 34. And now, the competitor who drew number 34. <laughs> That's a new theme by David B. Who we got? That guy can play the act. That's a new theme by David B. Who is it? Oh, it's oh, the Boston wow. Badass. That's the Boston That's Badass. The Boston Badass Page from There it is. Falling the a fiery ball of movie trivia knowledge. And she's in there with form with also with her faction mate. Fan favorite Paul Preston. So, all right, here we go. We're starting out. Here is first question. It's new releases. New releases. 
What 2021 family film features performances from Kenan Thompson, Ellie Kemper, and Rob Delaney? All right. So Look at not so not a pen moving. Finally. Fresh blood. And we have stumped them all. Yeah. If nobody gets this question correct, Christian and I get to leave. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Sweet tea. Going to you first. Can you write a dozen? Is incorrect. Let's try the Boston Badass page for Betty. A nice blank board for you it's guys. not the title of the movie, unfortunately. Paul Preston. Clifford? Nope. Is incorrect. Dan Merle. I got a nice wrong answer for you. Trolls World Tour. Nick Carly, wow. you're our last hope. Tom and Jerry. No. Tom and Jerry. All right. Uh, looking Nothing. for Home Sweet Home Alone. Oh, no wonder. I erased it from my memory because it's a piece of garbage. Oh, wow. <laughs> Everybody get down. Everybody. Oh. All right. And here is the next question mark. All right. See you. Dan Merle calms down with this next category of Don't no one films. see it. Not even out of curiosity. <laughs> That's all okay. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Dan, honey. Now I kinda wanna see it's, it. It's over now. It can't hurt you anymore. Sci-fi films is the category. I'm just still Stepping into it like a nice hot tub. Your question. What 2007 sci-fi horror remake stars Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig about a psychiatrist who finds those around her changing after a space shuttle crash? That sounds like a weird, wacky day at the office. It sounds like it could be something fun, though, depending on how you embraced it with your own personality. No, no. I don't think that's good news. I don't think Regardless so. of who you are. Fine. Five, four, three, two, one. Paige for Betty, did you have this one? Let's just go with Cowboy and Aliens. I uh, like the movie title. That's incorrect. Paul Preston. The Invasion? Is correct. Dan Merle. Lots of weird articles. The Invasion. And Nick Harley. Oh, the older one. Invasion of the Body oh, Snatcher. Un... Accurate, though, it may be close. I don't know. Morbius. Sweet tea oh. from right, right. Morbius. It's all trash. All right, so only, <laughs> <laughs> only Merle and Preston were the only ones on that one. So we go, now we're going back to the Brat Pack. Here we go. Seven close but self-centered friends in Georgetown struggle to deal with the transition from adolescence to adulthood in what film directed by Joel Schumacher? All right, and so... And going to board here, and it is one point for Preston and one for Merle, and that's it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Paul Preston. Saint Elmo's Fire. Saint Elmo's Fire. Yes, that's correct. correct. Dan Merle. Good movie, better song. Saint Elmo's Fire. All right, they Fire. pull into the lead here. How about Slick Nick? The insufferable Saint Elmo's Fire. You see, the guy doesn't like movies. Right. He's on the board though. Sweet tea. Uh, I said about last night. About last night is incorrect, though the same era. Page for Betty. The Boston Bass is back in the game, baby. See it almost Elmo's fire. Fire. All right. There you go. Got interesting. All right. Now we come to the penultimate question in this round, and it's in the category of the 1990s. And here is the question. Of the following actors, who does not appear in the 1997 film The Postman? Will Patton, Giovanni Ribisi, Tom Petty, or Joe Pantoliano? <laughs> I feel like I get all those questions. They're good ones. I've got yeah. a few. No, I, I enjoy them, but I, I don't know. I like that we're doing that. I feel like it's drawing the eye of the competitors. I feel like... Uh, Makes it challenge. It's a challenge. Four, three... Two, don't say that word in the studio. Oh. Pens down. We're going to go to Dangerous Dan Merle. Uh, total guess. I said Joe Pantoliano. Your guess is ratified. That is correct for a point. Slick Nick. Joe Pantoliano. Joey Pants is there. Sweet tea. Joe Pantoliano. Joey Pants and Boston Badass. Yeah, I couldn't spell that dude's last name, so I just went with the easy one. It, it is an easier last right. name to spell, though inaccurate. Let's go to Paul Preston. My fourth guess in the crap movies round. Whoa! Joe Pantoliano. Okay. All right, Paul Preston doing pretty well for himself right now. And Sweet Tea and Paige are tied at one. Paul and Dan with three and, and Slick Nick with two. All right, here we go. This is the final question in this round. Wild card, baseball is back. <laughs> Keanu Reeves and Diane Lane star in what 2001 film about a gambler who, by attempting to get out of debt, coaches a troubled little league team? You know, the problem with debt is that your debit card doesn't work. Oh, nice. I like what you're doing there. Little studio magic. Probably home viewer won't get the full capacity of that hilarious bar. Five, four, three, two, one. I know Slick Nick found it funny. Did he have the correct answer? Rest in peace, G-Baby. Hardball. That is correct for a big point there. Sweet tea. No. Necessary roughness. Didn't have it, did Paige? 
G baby, you got my heart. Hardball. Hardball is correct. Paul Preston. I do not have heart. Did not have it. Dan Merle? I said the bench warmer. Wow. Well, either way, with that, Clee Wiggins has been eliminated. Sweet uh, tea is gone. The badass stays alongside Preston, Merle, and Harley. All right, so now we await our next competitor. I love your shirt, Sweet Tea. And now, the competitor who drew number 35. Well, there it is again. Is this Flouse? Nope. It's the other one. Oh, boy. From the ruling class, making his free for all debut, the Tyrant, Ty Lieberman. The Tyrant is here. Right. Now, look, look at Nick. Now Nick's giving him respect. Nick is giving it. Kevin Smith comes out. Look, he gives him a fist bump. Oh, that's uh, the first sign of affection towards any other human being. It's like Nick, he disgraced Kevin Smith and he's fun of him. He's doing what one was, and then Ty, he gives uh, a fist bump. Okay. Ty, you know, it's like he's having an issue uh, sipping his wine and the mask, and uh, maybe he'll just have to take that very expensive bottle, I'm sure, outside. All right, here. Here is the question. Here is the question. <laughs> Joe? May I, may I, I have a 10 page poem. May I read that? No, you cannot. Oh. We, all right, here is the question of coming of age. Coming Com of age is the category. Joey Lauren Adams, Adam Goldberg, and Anthony Rapp appear in what 1990s coming of age film? All right, and so we're back at it again. Precious few competitors still to emerge from that curtain. And we're going to count you down here in five, four, Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to the tyrant. I don't. I put going all the way. It's a fun sentiment, but incorrect. Oh, Page for Betty. Uh, it looks like I wrote secondhand lion. Uh, it does, yeah. but that is not the movie. Does Paul Preston have it? I put chasing Amy. It seems they're old. Uh, Good guess. Oh, for so far, Dan Merle. Dazed and confused. There it is. Slick neck. <laughs> nah. Okay. okay. Didn't want to participate. All right, next one. Your next category is Black Cinema. And the question, what 2009 comedy stars Donald Faison and Mike Epps as criminals who accidentally accept a package of cocaine, which they must sell before the real owner finds it missing? Just another day in the life of Christian and Mark. Yeah. Donald Faison, friend of the show. He is. Mike Epps. Likes, some he likes, him, likes himself. Uh, Five. Star Wars. Four. Three. Two, one. Pens down, and let's go to Paige for Betty. Who doesn't love a good house party? I right? do love a good house party. That is not correct. However, <laughs> audience jumping the gun there too. Paul Preston. <laughs> this is probably also not correct. Let's be cops. That is not correct, though. A great movie. Yeah. Dan Merle. Hardball is just a, an answer. So I went with eight ball. Uh, wow. they, I mean, I understand the reference, but no. Slick Nick. Special delivery. One last shot with the tyrant. I have a different answer than all of them, and I think mine is correct. It's first Sunday. Next day air is what we're looking oh, for. Oh, come on. All right, so this is a tough round so far. So only Paul Preston, no, no, excuse me, only Dan Merle yeah. has any points in this one thus far. All right, here is our third question. It is DC movies. DC movies. What film based on a DC comic features performances from Bern Gorman, Ben Mendelsohn and Matthew Modine. Would it technically be fair if the category is DC movies to ask a question about, say, The Post? No. Because it takes place no. in the is District it, of no, Columbia. Then, no. It's, Five, stop, stop this. Four, three. Go, Commanders. Two, one. Our owner's terrible. Let's uh, do pens down there, Paul, and let's uh, start with you. I have the Dark Knight. That is incorrect. Let's try Dan Merle. It's appropriate I'm wearing a mask because I said the Dark Knight oh, Rises. That's a solid Bane impression. Slick Nick, the Bane of my existence. The Dark Knight Rises. There yeah, it is. He gets himself a point. Tyrant. That is what I would have put if I hadn't put the green. Oh, well, I don't know what I put. It was still your right. second choice. And uh, Paige. Paige for Betty. Uh, everyone likes a man that eats fish. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aquaman is incorrect. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so now we, so now it is question four, I believe. Yes. That's right. Question four, your penultimate question with uh, only Dan Merle and Slick Nick on the board. And the category is adventure films. And the question, Michael Caine and Sean Connery co-star in what John Huston film based on a Rudyard Kipling story? 
Just a shame that Mike Kalinowski isn't up there on the That's desk right. to give us his great Michael Caine impression. Or Sean Connery, I'm sure he's got one of those, too. He probably does. I bet Ken's got a good one. Five, four, three, two, one. We await with bated breath the answer first from Dangerous Dan Merle. I said the man who would be king. That's right. If he didn't have that other thing going on, let's go to Slick Nick. Nope. <laughs> okay. Tyrant. They're all laughing at me out there, but I know the man who would be king. Yes, right. you do. There. He's on the board there. How about Paige for Betty? Yeah, I don't got it. Uh, Paul Preston? The man who would be king. Okay, All so right. we get yeah. Frabetti still off the board, but we do have Tyrant and Preston now making an appearance alongside Slick Nick, but Dan Merle is feeling pretty comfortable. All right, so here we go. This is the question. The Rat Pack is the category. Lewis Milestone directed five of the Rat Pack members, including Frank Sinatra, in what 1960 heist film centered around a series of Las Vegas casino robberies? All right, so they try to scribble their answer. Dan Merle just using it as a practice question. That's right. Just at the driving range. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down with Slick Nick. Ocean's Eleven. Is accurate. Tyrant. Ocean's Eleven. Page for Betty. Ocean's Eleven. She's on the board, Paul Preston. Ocean's Eleven. Is safe and dangerous Dan Merle. Ocean's Pat. Eleven. And with that, Paige Fabetti has been eliminated. But it was not a, an easy round for Tyron and Paul Preston and even Slick Nick. They, they oh, never good. in doubt. Never in doubt. But Paige is eliminated, and now we are getting towards the end here. It is number 36. Number 36. And now, the competitor who drew number 36. Uh-oh. Ty's happy. Ty's happy. Yeah, he's celebrating. Ty's dancing. Ty's dancing. I, I've never seen... Ty's at... Whoa! Look who it is! For all debut, he's the greatest a Nick like him too? player of all time, the Ranger, Rick. Oh, he got a second rope. Yeah, he has multiple ropes on at the same time. Rick Raddus, the Rager, and Nick is Nick. Nick is, let's see how do they feel about each other. Oh, 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 there's some, there's some words. Oh, they love each other. Okay, oh, that, look at that. That, that makes sense. Okay. That All right, so sense. now Slick Nick they're warming up. Well, look at that. So, uh, look, the former faction mates are happy to see each other. Oh, well, that's very sweet. Are they right. clones? Okay, so we now have our... Real quick, I want to set the record before we get started. Yes, right. of course you do. Rick Raddus is the greatest 36 entry of all time, daddy -o. Let's go! Greatest Three for all, baby! All right, all right, ready to go. All right, here we go. Rom-coms. Who starred as Gary Grabowski alongside Jennifer Aniston in the 2006 rom-com The Breakup, directed by Peyton Reed? Remember, kids, leave a trail of breadcrumbs before venturing into Rick Radice's chest. Yes. Okay, they seem to know this one. Seems like it. Five, four, three, two, one. The tyrant cackles. Can I ask for a repeat? No. You may not. It's as Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn is? Correct. Correct. He got it. How about Rick the Ranger? That's great to hear, because the Ranger had Vince Vaughn there. Yes, he did. There it is, Paul Preston. Why would I want to do the dishes, Vince Vaughn? Dan Merle? The tall, tall man, Vince Vaughn. Very tall indeed. Slick Nick. Vince Vaughn. They all had it. All right. So right then and there, we got a tie game all the way through. Here's the next one. Let's careen into the 1980s, featuring this question for a point. What 1989 Ron Howard dramedy features Steve Martin, Rick Moranis, Mary Steenburgen, and Keanu Reeves? Great cast there. Yeah, right like word. It. Great cast. And a little bit of a great question right now as we see a tie game once. And the Dan Merle's still in there. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're going to kick off this time with Rick Raddus. It's all good in the parenthood, Daddy. Uh, I don't think they say that. Paul Preston. Parenthood. That's, That's correct. correct. Parenthood. Nailed it. Slick Nick. Parenthood. And the tyrant. Sure, parenthood. All right, we're all tied up again. So these guys, they are they are battling through it. Here's question three. And it's in the category of nothing but Star Wars. Wars. All right, here it is. In the category of Star Wars, you were right were the last words spoken by which character to Luke Skywalker? 
Just be- sorry, just before he died. I was going to say, what a dramatic read. You were right were the last spoken words by which character to Luke Skywalker just before he died? I don't know if you admitted that on purpose. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't see it. You know, it's a long day. It's been long. Long day here. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we are going to start with Paul Preston. Uh, it's a Yoda. It is not Yoda. How about Dan Merle? Darth Vader, if you want to get cute about it, Anakin Skywalker. He's not cute at all. He's more machine now than man. Uh, let's go to Slick Nick. I said, never mind. Twisted and evil. Uh, I, think, I think Paul is right. It's Yoda. Uh, it, it, Paul is certainly not right. It is not Yoda and the Rager Rick Raddus. Are you guys listening? It's Darth Yoda. That's correct. They really that wanted it correct. to be Yoda. Right. So after that, only Dan Merle hits it. So it is two across the board. Dan Merle has three as we get to the fourth question in this round. All right. It's your penultimate one for a point, And it's in the category of dystopian future and time travel. What year saw the release of Waterworld, starring Kevin Costner as the Mainer? Mainer or Mariner? What do you think? I would say Mariner. I would probably say Mariner, and now I do see it's been corrected. I'm not taking the bullet for that one. I just read what I'm told. Five, four, the Mainer. Three. I've said worse. Two, one. Pens down, and let's go to our Mainer, Dan Merle. I believe it's the Mariner, and I said 1995. I corrected myself, and you still got it correct. Slick Nick? <laughs> no. Okay. How about the Tyrant? We said, we said 93 is correct. 93? No, no, that's the year Yoda was the right. Mariner. Let's go to Rick Raddus. I concur. Nah. Okay. okay, and 95. Stays alive. Look at Paul Preston there, gets himself a point. That's a big point for Preston. A lot of twos on this scoreboard right yep, now. It is. All right, so this is the final question, and, and it is big one. wild card, fourth entries in franchises. All right. Who directed the 2008 entry in the Rambo franchise, Rambo? All right, so here we go with the Tyrant, Rager Rick Raddus, and Slick Nick all on the chopping block. But Paul Preston can't exactly get comfortable just yet. No, he's got to hit this and hope Five, that some people hit it. Four. Stand safe. Three, two, one. And we start with Slick Nick. Sylvester Stallone is correct. So he now has three points and is safe for the is moment. It, wait, uh, so it's okay for him to put Sly Vester? Yes. So, that, that we'll, we'll accept we'll Sylvester slip. Stallone there. Uh, okay, that's not what he put, but okay. I have Sylvester Stallone. Correct. There it is. And Rage Rick Rattles. How fascinating. Sylvester Stallone. Okay. Paul Preston. Sylvester Stallone. And Dan Merle. Sylvester wow. Stallone. And with that, Slick Nick, the Ranger, and the Tyrant have all been eliminated. Paul Preston and Merle get rid of the three renegades. And it is a battle here. I'm it is only 36. Four people left. Four people left. Three people will come in, and then there's one to go. And then there was one. And so Paul Preston and Dan Merle starting to make their case for MVP of the entire free-for-all, along with some other great candidates that we saw previously. But right now, it's Merle and Preston, the last two men standing currently at the podium. And now, Ken Knapsack to introduce our next competitor. And now, the competitor that drew number 37. Uh-oh. Another Swag Squad loyal participant. Who's it going to be? It could be Andres Cabrera. At this point, it could be. Yeah, I think so. Whoever it is waiting for their moment. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, is that. Oh, look at this. Whoa! Really? Now remember, this is not Winston's first appearance in uh, in Free For All. He, he, was, he appeared uh, in the live version in 2019, memorably recreating one of the characters from us. Yes, he did, and it was a great entrance, and he's been a great manager uh, since his managing time, and now he leads swag. All right, next. And now, the competitor that drew number 38. Uh-oh. Like oh the my god. Get smarter. You can feel the energy already as they recognize the music, ladies and gentlemen. This music has come to spring here. Yes, it has. 
And there she is. Oh, what an, what an entrance. What a fun entrance by Lady Justice and Merle. Lady Justice and Merle, we got them on the same table finally. And then there is Paul Preston as well and Winston Marshall. Then we are going to find out who number 39 is. Let's get to it, Ken. How do you follow that? And now the competitor who drew number 39. The music. I'm waiting for it. Do you recognize this music? I don't. Just waiting for a competitor to emerge. It's very heroic. I don't know who it is. Very galactic kind of music here. It is. Who is it? No one's coming out. From the Force Center Podcast. Oh, wait a minute. Making his return to the Schmodown. He is a former movie trivia Schmodown Star Wars champion of the world. Not that boss. What is it? <laughs> Can just introduce himself. He just introduced himself. I don't think we have. We've never had that before. He just introduced himself. He doesn't even have the authority to do such a thing and look at all the Ken Napsok is back on the table. Ken, how many cons have you been to, dog? Too many. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Wow. We're going to start with the 70s. We're going to start with the 70s. Good. What 1976 <laughs> horror film features supporting performances from Patrick Trufton, David Warner, and Lee Remick? I, I know you're probably exhausted by now, but uh, you got to keep those vocal cords ready. You might ask. We're down at announcer. We're up like one last person. I can't. I can't leave you at right. this point. All right, going to count everybody down here in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, starting with Winston A. Marshall. I'm kind of offended by you two. Y'all know my black ass don't watch no horror films. I said Night of the Living Dead. It's oh. a good guess, but incorrect. Does Marisol McKee have said the, the Omen? It is the Omen. The Paul Omen. Chris. And Dan Merle. Richard Donner is the omen. And Ken, you remember the 70s? I do. I put Carrie, which I think came out a year later. All right, so Ken Knapsack <laughs> still looking for his first point in quite some time here in the Schmodown as we move on to our next category, which is family films. And the question for a point. Spike Jones directed what 2009 fantasy film featuring supporting performances from Catherine Keener, Mark Ruffalo, James Gandolfini, and Chris Cooper? All right, so That's a who's you, who. you've got the former five-time champion, yep. the most recent former champion in Marcel McKee, a great manager in Winston Marshall, Star Wars, Star Wars champion, champion and Paul Preston is a tremendous Four. competitor. What a, what a table. Two. One. We're going to start this one with Marisol. Where the Wild Things Are. Yeah, that is correct, Paul Preston. Where the Wild Things Are. Did Dan Merle have it? I did indeed. Where Dan the Wild Napsa. Things Are. Kid scared, the book scared me as a kid, where the wild things are. He had it. Ken Napsog on the board is Winston A. Marshall. Grown-ups scare me. Okay. <laughs> uh, I actually agree more with Winston than I do anybody else, but uh, I can't give him a point. All right, here we go. Here's the next one. Uh-oh, Winston, look I'm out. sorry about Winston. This is horror films. Wes Craven. Wes Craven directed this 1997 meta slasher film featuring David Arquette, Courtney Cox, and Rebecca Gayhart. All right. So Winston almost leaving the studio. Maybe we could get him to it now. He was not happy about that. There. Yeah. He wasn't happy about it. You don't like horror movies either. What are you talking That's about? That's not true. They scare you to pieces. You scare me to pieces. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going to kick this one off with Paul Preston. Scream. Is incorrect. Damn it. How about Dan Merle? Scream 2. Yeah, 1997. Did Ken have it? Uh, but Scream 1 was better. Okay, how about Winston A. Marshall? I literally was thinking about putting that 2 on there. And Marisol McKee? Yeah, it's Scream 2. Oh, so look at that. Marisol and Dan. Marisol and Dan with three. It looks like they're going to be safe here. So Marisol with three and Dan with three at the moment. All right, your next category is the 2000s. And the question for one point, and a very interesting one at that, what 2001 action film and creature feature was directed by Joe Johnston and includes performances from William H. Macy, Taylor Leone, and Sam Neill? 
question three so far. Yeah, so, so Winston's still looking to get on the board, but he's writing confidently. Ken Knapsack has a point, Paul two, and Marisol and Dan, no surprise here, tied at the top. Five, Five four, four, three, two, one, and we are going to start with Dan Merle. Jurassic Park three. All right, and that is correct, Ken Knapsack. I made up a movie called Little Joe Young. <laughs> it's actually Mighty Joe Young. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's the prequel. Creature feature. That's the prequel. Uh, Mighty Joe Winston Young. A. Marshall. <sighs> I saw this for the first time three months ago. Jurassic Park 3, hey, baby. Hey, it ties them up. Does Marisol yeah. McKee have it? It's not very good. It's, it's not. Right? No. No. It's Jurassic Park 3. All right. Well, uh, Paul Preston, did he have it? Only once to put the sequel. Jurassic Park 3. There it is. All right. So now the battle becomes between the pit boss and Winston. The rest are safe. So it is a battle between Winston Marshall and Ken Napsok. All right. Action. Action is the movie. And here, excuse me, action is a category. And here it is. What year saw the release of Conan the Destroyer, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and Romancing the Stone? You know, understandable here because you have three competitors there in the middle that are all in their career prime. You have Ken, who announces and mm -hmm. hosts. You have Winston, who manages. So they're getting the ring rust off. And it's Five, so yeah. four, three, two. One pence down, and Ken Knapsack kicking it to you first. I was 41, 1984. That is correct. Winston, Winston. Marshall. 83. Oh! oh my. <laughs> Quite the popular year of this, this game. It's 1984. Yeah, it's a great album, too. Paul and Dan Marshall. Very dystopian, 1984. And with that, Winston Marshall has been eliminated. Right. Ken Knapsack's going to have to announce number 40 from the desk. <laughs> We're going to find out because number 40 is about to make his way in or her way in. And it is now going to be the 40th competitor, the last. This is it. Of the free will. This is it. And right now, Dan Merle is playing in at number, excuse me, 27. Paul Preston, excuse me, T-H-E, Paul Preston at 32. And they are all the way in there still. Marisol McKee went perfect in that round. Ken Napsock somehow survived that round. And now we await the final competitor of the free-for-all. Name of the game is survive and advance. One more competitor, and then they will start to dwindle up there at the podium. Could just be one, could be two or three knockouts, but we will get to the bottom of this and eventually, sooner rather than later, have a winner of the free-for-all. And now, the final competitor of the 2022 free-for-all. I know exactly who it is with that music. What is this going to do to the room? What is this going to do to the fans? The chat is about to go crazy. From oh. the stars, oh boy. making his free for all debut, Whoa. the chosen one, Dungeon! to see this kind of dancing, but Shander Dondafani looked like he got some tips outside in the parking lot, and now he's here and ready to dance his way into some movie trivia. Look at Chandra Dondafani, the former IG champ, part of the stars, and he is number 40, and this is it. <laughs> the final five. I thought Winston was a bad manager. He's an even worse player. Oh, <laughs> I mean, come on. Bro. It's not what the guy does. Chandra oh. Dondafani. Lady Justice Marisol McKee, T H E V Paul Preston, Dangerous Dan Merle, and the Pit Boss, Ken Knapsack, the final five of the free for all. And here we go. We're going to start with scores and soundtracks. Here we go. Which film marks the first collaboration of Danny Elfman and director Tim Burton? It really does look like the Expendables 4 up there, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure certainly does. I think there's going to be an... Um, this this is a powerhouse of trivia. Yes, it it, is. On, on And every single division Five, that you look at. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we are going to start with Chandra of the Chosen. Wee wee, big adventure. One of the great comedies of all time. And Aerosol for every McKee. question I get right, something's coming up. Oh, but, oh no. Except no. for the mask. Oh, uh, except for the mask. Aerosol, did you have it? 
uh, it, it suddenly smells very strongly of baby oil in here, but it's Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, you can mask, get that. Paul Nurse Preston. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And Dan Merle. Legitimately one of my favorite movie scores of all time. Pee Wee's Big it, Adventure. It just the whole movie's great. Pen, uh, Ken Napsack. It sent me into sketch comedy, Pee Wee's well, Big look Adventure. look at this. So all tied up. Yeah. Good one. All right. There we all go. All right. Your next category is mysteries and thrillers such as what really happened to Large Marge. Your question <laughs> for a point. Which Academy Award-winning actress co-stars with Denzel Washington as police officer Amelia Donaghy in the 1999 crime thriller The Bone Collector? So right now, this could you could be looking at the free-for-all winner. You're looking at the free-for-all winner right now. You, I think You're you most certainly it. are. It's just who, who is, is going to do it? Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down, and this time we're going to start with Marisol. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie is correct. Did Paul Preston have Angelina it? Jolie. How about Dan Merle? Angelina Jolie. Ken Napsa. Saw in the theaters. Angelina Jolie. Chandra Dandapani? The other Angelina Jolie. Nicole Oh, oh Chandra Misses. Chandra Misses. Chandra Misses. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> All right, Chandra Misses. And here is the next question. We're going with animated. Animated. All right. What year? saw the release of Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, and We're Back, A Dinosaur's Story. Uh, that could be an exciting Patreon tier in the future, is uh, you and me play strip movie trivia. No, I'm all right. Other. I'm all right. No? No, I'm good. Patreon tier. Check it out. Nope. Counting you all down here in five, four, three, two, one. And we're going to go first to Paul Preston. 93. Is correct. Dan Merle. I almost changed it, and I should have, because I said 1994. Oh! Yeah. That's <laughs> 1992. Okay. Oh, side. Chandra down to Pond. I'm tied with Dan Moore, you guys. 1993. Okay, and uh, Marisol McKee. We're back. It's 1993. Oh, sorry. Right. So, now look at this. Chandra Dandapani with two, Marisol with three, Paul with three, and Dan and Ken both with two. So, here is the next question. That's right, Chandra finds himself trailing with one of those twos, but he has an advantage in this next category, potentially, because it is comic book movie. <laughs> that was the last one. <laughs> Here it is, for a point. Which actor plays a hero called Mr. Furious, whose superpower is rage in 1999's Mystery Men? All right, and so this is maybe outside of the wheelhouse of some, just because you don't focus on inner geekdom as much when you're playing singles or teams. But yeah. a lot of furious scribbling going on, and now answers in five, four, three, two, one. Pence down, dangerous down. Ben Stiller is accurate. Ken Napsock ahead of its time. Ben Stiller. He's playing great. Chandra Dunaponte. Benny Stiller. We knew we knew that one. Marisol McKee. Anger solves nothing, Ben Stiller. Great point and correct uh, answer, Paul Preston. Ben Stiller. All got it. All right, so look at this. What an interesting, interesting scenario we're at. Could possibly have a winner right now. Chandru Dandapani, Dan Merle, and Ken Napsok tied at three. Paul Preston and Marisol can't make it here, can't make it out. So here is the final question in this round. This is the wild card. This is the all or nothing. Movies with either 0% on Rotten Tomatoes or 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Here's the question. What are the two franchises whose fourth entries, both released in 1987, sit at 0% on Rotten Tomatoes? You need the names of the franchise. You need two franchises. Not the movies themselves. I'm going to give you that one because what are the two franchises whose fourth entries, both released in 87, sit at 0% on Rotten Tomatoes? So you're saying neither one of them are good? There we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. down. Pens down. Starting with you, the pit boss. I'm a clerical heir. I don't know why I'm here. Jaws and Superman? Uh, oh. Incorrect. Chandra down to Pond. Uh, Superman, I just... I just said indeed. Incorrect, for the Marisol moment. McKee. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween. Incorrect, Correct. Paul Preston. I just said critters and nothing else. And Incorrect, Dan, Dan Merle, stay alive. I thought for sure it was Jaws and Superman. I guess I'm wrong. It was Police Academy and Jaws. <laughs> and with that, Chandra Dandapani, Chandra Dandapani, Dan Merle, and Ken Napsack <laughs> have all been eliminated. Chandra <laughs> Causing chaos. He's causing chaos. He had gotten right between.
but it's still going to eliminate Merle, and it's still going to eliminate Napster. But Mer so. Merle's up there for potential MVP, so there's certainly a great might, performance. You might not, you might not see the last of it, but that is. Look at that. So now you have your final two competitors here. It is Lady Justice Marisol McKee and T H E Paul Preston. The final two. All right, so now we have two competitors remaining in this epic movie trivia showdown. Three for all. It's the fifth time we've done it, and this may be the best of the bunch because remaining up there at the question podiums are the T.H.E. Paul Preston and Lady Justice Marisol McKee. Here's how we'll determine a winner. It's a normal round with five questions, each one worth a point. Should the competitors be tied at the end of this round, we will then go to an overtime segment which features three questions. We will continue to do overtime three question rounds until we come up with a champion. Obviously, if one of these competitors is in the lead at the end of this five round set, they will be declared the winner of the free for all. And more importantly, Christian, they're going to have a title shot to use at their leisure. That's right. All right. So we asked Marisol McKee, are you ready? Sure am. Paul Preston, are you ready? T-H-E, sorry. That's right. Yeah. And that's right. I'm ready. All right. Here we go. We're going to start with directors. James Cameron made his feature film directorial debut with a sequel to what 1978 horror comedy? Need the name of the original. Paul Preston shot you a look. He did, and I, well deserved. Well, well, you you should have shot. I know. Did. I just you, did. You just did it too. Damn. So, I'm sorry. I didn't correct. Deep. You didn't correct yourself. I did. Five, four, three. I just said I'm sorry too. One pens down. We're going to start with Lady Justice. I guess I've never attempted to smell to spell this before. It's piranha. It's very tough, and we will accept that close enough. Uh, Paul Preston. Piranha. That's All a. Right. I think a more accurate spelling, but. All right, question two. All right, and so it is one to one. Your next category, these two fellows are famous. Sly and Arnie. And the question for a point. How many films in the Terminator franchise has James Cameron directed Arnold Schwarzenegger in? Two Camerons back to back. Yeah, no, well, the guy's popular. Makes pretty big movies. All right. Check them out. Maybe review one or two. All right, well, <laughs> make me sad. <laughs> Four, you're never going back, huh? No. Three, two, one. Pens down, and let's go to <clears throat> the Paul Preston. Two. Is correct. How about Lady Justice? Two. That's right. It was the first two. Best All of the game. Book. All right. Now we go to the Wizarding World. Oof. What is the subtitle of the second film in the Fantastic Beasts series? I was not awake long enough to tell you that answer. Well, I hear that the third one's supposed to be pretty good. That's what the, that's what the kids are the saying. The kids are saying. I'll be fair. Had uh, Andres Ace Cabrera on my show talking about oh, okay. it. Defended it well. Five, four, three, two, one. Back to Lady Justice. Did you have it? He's a terrible man. The crimes of Grindelwald. That is correct. How about Paul Preston? The crimes of Grindelwald. Yeah, we don't uh, like Grindelwald. Yeah. All right like that guy too much. So your next question and your penultimate one in this round is in the category of historical epics and dramas. Here we go. Angelina Jolie plays Queen Olympias, the mother of Colin Farrell, in what film from director Oliver Stone? We're at 3-3 three, three here. That's right. <laughs> you couldn't have asked for anything better. They don't look like they're going to blink anytime soon. Nope, not yet. Well, it doesn't look. We'll see. Five. Four, three, two, one. Going first to T-H-E. Alexander. Is correct. Did Marisol have it? Yeah, I think she's actually like younger than him in real life. Uh, it's Alexander. Yeah, that doesn't sound fair. That is correct, and it is four to four. One question remains. All right. Possibly. Could. Possibly. Maybe. All right. So here it is. Here's where we stand. If one of our two competitors gets it right and the other gets wrong, we'll have our winner. However, if they both get it right or wrong, we will move to a three-question sudden death. A24 movies is the question. And here it is. Based on a true crime memoir of the same name by Stephen Elliott, what 2010's film featured performances from James Franco, Ed Harris, Amber Heard, and Timothy Chalamet. 
All right, so it could all be on the line right now. And we will not say whether an answer is correct or incorrect yet until we find out the two answers like here. like to build some tension yes. here, time to time. Counting you down here in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and so first we're going to go to Lady Justice. True story. And, and let's go to Paul Preston. I got nothing. Looking for the Adderall Diaries. So we are going to sudden death. It is a three... Wow. wow! Sudden death. Both Maris. That's, that's the first question I believe Marisol's missed. By yeah, the way. Yeah, she's uh, she's not half bad at movie trivia. And so now we will go to overtime, as many of y'all probably already predicted we might. And that overtime round is going to feature three questions. So again, after the three questions, whoever's in the lead will be declared the winner of the free for all. Should we be tied? We move on to another three round segment. All right, here we go. The films Tron and Tex were released in what year by Disney? Yeah, usually you can figure out the category from the question. Yeah. But it's a fun little wrinkle. Sometime, yeah. Build a little bit of suspense here. All right. It could all come down to a movie release date, but we have two questions remaining. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're starting with Marisol. 1982. That is accurate, Paul Preston. 1982. Also all right. had it. All right. There you go. So they both got it. All right. Next question, Mark. All right. And not telling you the category, just going right to the question. And here it is. Vince Vaughn featured as FBI agent Peter Novak alongside Vincent D'Onofrio in what 2000 thriller about experimental technology used to get inside a serial killer's mind? That sounds dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. So we just asked movie trivia questions. This whole getting yourself involved in this is dangerous. Look at these two. I know. Focused. Mm -hmm. Laser light. Five, four, three, two. One, and we're going to Paul Preston. The Th Paul Preston first. Again, I have nothing. He's got nothing. So now for a one-point lead, here we go to Marisol McKee. The cell. Is correct, and All we right. have a leader. So Marisol McKee puts herself, potentially she can win the free-for-all if she either gets this one right or... They both miss. They both miss. Yep. All right. All so right. here it is. Here is the question. Could come from anywhere. Of the following actresses, who has not appeared in the Alien series? Catherine Waterston, Numi Rapace, Christina Ricci, or Charlize Theron? All right, so I, I, you wanted to end it on one of these. Possibly. It's a big one. And we've been doing it all season, yeah, so let's yeah. see if right Marisol right. can do right. it. Five. 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 Four. Three. Two. One, and so first, we're going to go to Marisol McKee. Christina Ricci. And, and to now Paul we go to Preston? Paul Preston. Christina Ricci. And your winner of the 2022 Free For All, Lady Justice Marisol McKee. Right, effort by Marisol coming in. I think she missed one question all match. Oh, he won't shake her hand. He won't shake her hand. He's devastated. Such a well played match. Yes, he had a great shot. An MVP worthy performance, I would say, with a lot of other competitors. But it is Marisol McKee, Lady Justice. Uh, we knew it wasn't going to be long before we possibly saw her back in the title match anyway. And now she has a shot to cash in. If she wants it, maybe she wants to toss it someone else's way. But Marisol McKee now in control of her destiny in the Schmoden. But what can't she do? Look, she, she's building on her legacy, right? If you look at like a Sam Levine and a Dan Merle, what have they done? They won, they won championships and they've won a free-for-all. Marisol McKee has just won a free-for-all. She is continues to build legacy. However, when you look and she, and look, just like a Dan Merle before her okay. and like a Sam Levine, she had a really good number, and she capitalized on it. But you look at THE Paul Preston, and of course he's being bummed out, but he was number 32, and he was in there all the way to the final two. Dan Merle, another one, uh, uh, showing how great he is and what a return for him yep. at number 27. Then you look at some of the – you look at Ben Bateman, what Ben Bateman was able to do in this Played thing. very well. And I'm going to give a shout-out to the FCL graduate, Travis uh, Fishburne. Fishburne yeah. played amazing. He, he really did do a lot of dazzling, as did Amaru Moses early in the match. Yeah, you look at Saul, look at Amaru Moses, two IG guys who, who had an incredible, incredible performance. So this is a hell of a showing from everyone here, but the story, once again, as we've said many times over, is Lady Justice Marisol McKee. 
This is going to be an interesting thing because she already has a number one contender yep. match for singles. Yes, she does. Will she use that? To, she, if she wants to, she could uh, go use that fighter way to get that title shot. And then if she loses it, she could just challenge the winner, the, the person right away again if she wanted to do that. Or teams. The, I mean, the only the only team she can't give this title shot to is unfortunately her Philadelphia Eagles. That might have been a low blow, but my All team ain't going anywhere anytime any soon either. And so now. The world is her oyster, that being Lady Justice. And now for an exclusive interview with the winner of the Free For All 5, we turn it over to the great Jilly Marie standing by with Marisol McKee. What's going on, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? I am here with the winner of Free For All 5, Marisol McKee. Yes, yes, well deserved, well deserved. Marisol, that was, um, uh, my heart's still pounding. I can only imagine how you're feeling right now. How do you feel winning Free For All 5? Oh, it's really, really, really surreal. Um, I still can't believe it happened. I was, I think um, my butt was getting numb waiting uh, to just play this match. Um, and uh, that was really thrilling, just waiting kind of scene. Uh, all the amazing competitors come up. Um, just so indicative. This is just such a such a crapshoot. This was just a hell of a free for all. Um, so many amazing players came through. Um, I I just got lucky here. I mean, so many amazing players came through. Um, it's just the luck of the draw. But when you're 38 and the free for all, what else can I do but win it? So so that feels pretty good. Perfect. And uh, talking about amazing players, you did get to compete with people like Dan Merle, Paul Preston. How did it feel to compete and be along on those booths with? players like that. Oh, it's such a high. This is this is the best environment to do it. Um, I can't wait to get into the ring with some of these guys one on one, but 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 just getting like kind of breaking the ice with that here um, is such a good scrap like this. It's every competitor's dream and they were all terrific. I was so, so honored to be down there um, down the final stretch with those these amazing competitors, everybody. Now we all have to know you have a title shot on the line now. You can use it for any belt that you want. What are you going to do with it? What, what's going to happen? Are you going to wait? Are you going to do it right now? What's, what's going to happen? We need to know. Oh, this season's pretty green. And, and I know my shoulder looks a little empty without, without that, that shiny hardware there. But I got a number one contenders match coming up. I, I have a path back to my belt right now. So Lady's going to take her time. You know, I have options. So I'm going to see the season's pretty young. Um, and I've got, already got uh, some options in front of me. So I'm going to see where it goes. Well, I'm very intrigued. Well, congratulations, Marisol. I love that I'm, we're a part of a family Marisol. And so, you know, and hey, there we go. <laughs> congratulations. Back to you guys at the desk. Wonderful performance there from your winner, Marisol McKee. But we have one more interview to toss back to Julie Marie, and that is going to be the MVP, the most valuable player of this free for all five. A lot of great candidates. It's been discussed amongst a lot of us here in the studio as to who exactly has earned the right in a well contended field. And for an exclusive interview now with the MVP reveal, we go back to Julie Marie. Who's standing by with you? What's going on, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Now, after deliberation from our seven judges, it was a hard choice, but it is, in fact, unanimous. Your MVP for Free For All 5 is none other than Dangerous Dan Merle. Yes, yes. Dan, congratulations. Now, this isn't your first rodeo. You have been here before. You have been to many Free For Alls before. But how do you feel after this one? How are you feeling? Well, you know, as a huge Batman fan, obviously, uh, you know, to be one number off, I'm going to be kicking myself for a while on that. But uh, Free For Alls kind of feast or famine for me. I've been, I've played in four of them now. I've been to two final tables and I've been eliminated en masse uh, twice, including uh, last, uh, last year in one round. So, it just goes to show you the unpredictability of this. And, uh, you know, I honestly, like, I was out there talking to the folks that were watching. I think the consensus was that it was going to be Paul who played uh, the, the Paul Preston. The Paul Preston. played uh, T-H-E, who played such an incredible game um, and uh, taking Marisol all the way to the end. Um, so just to, to be, to get this and, and, and for it to be a, a vote like that, a confidence in, in my performance, you know, I'm pr I, I will ultimately be very happy with my performance today, t tomorrow, <laughs> starting tomorrow. Perfect. We did have a lot of amazing showings today. We had Amaru Moses. We had Travis Fishburne. So how does it feel to compete with these, these players who pretty much came and 
destroyed some of these rounds right now. How, how are you feeling with those players? I mean, you know, I, I feel lucky that a lot of them missed me, that a lot of them were in the first half of the show because otherwise things may have gone a lot differently. And um, that's always part of it, too, is number placement. Where do you come in? Um, I, I was talking to Paul between uh, rounds one. There was the, the one with where I missed Tron Legacy, uh, and I just barely survived. I said, well, that's my lucky round. And you, you usually get maybe one. Maybe one. And so I used my one, and... Um, it's just such a fun event to watch, and that's what I love about it. It's the unpredictability. You always get these performances, these streaks from people that you might not expect. You have big surprises from people that don't last as long as you think that they would uh, in the in the event. So it's just, it is really is. There's so many great things about the Schmodown, but the free for all has always been my favorite event. So I'm so glad I could be here and play and last more than one round this year. That's always great. Perfect, perfect. And you did come out number 27, which is fun fact, my favorite number. And you made it to the final five. So were you happy with your number 27? Were you a little nervous? How did you feel about that number placement? I mean, it's always good to be in the second part of the show, just because you minimize the risk of something crazy happening. Like, you know, an IG champion coming in and eliminating you along with the pit boss. Uh, but that, again, that's the free for all. That's what you do. And that's, that's why people love to watch this event, but yeah, no 27, obviously that's a nice draw. Uh, but it also, I, you know, it feels like if, if I'd been lucky enough to go on and win the event, I, I would have felt like I, I really put in a great performance otherwise. And I think that, you know, uh, it would be great to be number like 37 one day though. That'd be cool. But that, that, it's fun. I just love playing. And, you know, if you're a later number, that means you don't get to play as long. And that's the fun part is playing the game. There you go. And it was a joy to watch you play. Now, we have to get down to business here. As the MVP, yeah. you do get a nice little prize okay. with that. So I would like to be proudly announce that you do have a guaranteed number one contender match Ooh. that you can use. Really? You do. You do. Do you think you might? You do have to use it this season. Okay. Do you think you're going to hang on to it a bit? Maybe use it within the next week or so? How are you feeling about that? I mean, that's the question. We've been playing this long enough that people are setting precedents. Do you do you do Paulo Yama style? Do you leave people in anticipation forever? Or do you do you just like right out of the gate? Do you surprise somebody? Because they don't think that people are expecting you. And also, like, obviously, my season hasn't really begun yet in earnest. So... I'm still trying to figure out what Teams is looking like for me. Um, obviously, I haven't really entered the singles picture yet. This would be a great way to jump in. But, you know, I, I feel like the Hamlet a little bit. I say it every year. To be able to kind of jump the line, I've always had my prize on that inner geekdom belt. To be able to sort of jump the line and maybe get one shot away from a title contender, maybe I go lock myself away and not in the dungeon. You don't, you don't want to lock yourself there, trust me. But maybe I go lock myself away somewhere else study up a little bit. I might know a person or two that knows a couple things about IG, and maybe that's a great way to jump into that league. So I, I will say that I'm going to think very carefully and consider my options before I do anything. Well, we might get Dan Merle going after that Inner Geekdom Championship belt. We'll see. I'm very intrigued. My heart's racing now, but congratulations on your MVP status. It was great watching you play, and I can't wait to see you uh, cash in that number one contender match. Uh, wh whatever I end up doing, it's going to be a good time. You can, you can trust me on that. Congrats, Dan. Back to you at the desk. There you have it. Your MVP, dangerous Dan Merle. Well earned, but also we'd be remiss if we didn't give a huge shout out to a lot of the other stars who really shine today. Some newer names in the movie trivia showdown. Yeah, I mean, look, look at what Amaru Moses did. And it was not an easy discussion. It was unanimous, but it wasn't easy. It was Amaru Moses. Travis Fishburne also was the top of the conversation and obviously THE. Paul Preston, but when you look at what Dangerous Dan Merle did, how many rounds he was in, how many points he scored, how many eliminations he had, and now he's got that prize. Another question is, what's he going to do with it? So it's <laughs> both of it, because that it comes back. We haven't had it in a while now that he's got it. What's he going to do with it? So we don't know, and now we have yet another free-for-all in the books, Mark, and Friday Night Titans is going to have a lot to do. There's so much coming up on Friday Night Titans. What's the aftermath is going to be now that Marisol McKee has a title shot, now that Dan's got his thing? So much. And Wait, we're just getting started. A landscape easy. shift, if you will. Maybe one of those landscape shifts that fell the dinosaurs in the land before time. It's almost. Shannon got that one right. The end of our time. No, 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 she did. Uh, no, 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 no. Didn't miss that one. But uh, it was a great time here at the Free For All. And obviously, uh, here with the crew, I think they deserve a big round of applause as well for. Uh, 
adjusting to some curveballs that the world tends to throw at us these days, but we did it all as a family, as a team, and as one community, and now the product, the Free For All 5, is in the books, so we encourage you to share with your friends. Go ahead and uh, let us know your thoughts on social media, on the platform of your choice. That's Christian. I'm Mark, an incredible crew, incredible competitors. Some managers popping in there. So Julie many. Marie, great with the post. How about Draco coming back? Andreco it was back. great seeing the Android back. right after Ben Bateman had cleared it, one of the better moments that we've ever seen in a free-for-all, and a tip of the cap to our incredible writing staff headed by P.J. Campbell and Paul Denuso. Ace job, gents. Yes, so much that went down, historic moments, and we thank all of you. And once again, if you, even if you're commenting on the live stream, comment in the comment section. It is very, very, very important for you to do. It helps us. It helps let people know about it. And don't forget about Friday Night Titans. Don't forget about Patreon. All of it and follow us on all these social media platforms. That's Christian Harloff. I'm Mark Ellis. Your winner of the Free For All 5 is Lady Justice Marisol McKee, your MVP, Dangerous Dan Merle. And that will do it for us here at the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia. And to all, a good night. Peggy. Hi. Hey, can we talk to you? Sure. Okay. Before we talk... I owe you an apology, and I know I owe you an apology, and I want to say that what happened at Spectacular, I thought about it, and it wasn't fair to you, and I know it probably was embarrassing, and it caught you off guard, and it's just not the direction I want to go anymore, and so, first and foremost, I'm so sorry, and I really mean that. Kate, can I just jump in for a second? Of Look, course. Peggy, I'm going to cut to the chase, okay? I'm all about business, you know that, and for me, my business this season is to elevate rookies. All right, it's to elevate people who did well last season, players that are new in the league that I'm impressed by. And I'm going to be honest, I liked Radis and I liked Newman and Paige, but I like you. Yeah. You had a phenomenal season last season, and Kate and I, we've been talking about a different direction no, with I the love Den. You. <laughs> so, look, this is what we were thinking. And we want you to partner with Bateman. You're kidding. No. Yeah, it's no, no tricks here. It's, it's, look, we have this one match, and I ran it by the chairman, and this is the idea, all right? We want to bring the profile of this match up. So okay. I play and you play. We each have a different partner. You just find somebody. I have a patron, okay? Literally a patron of mine. Somebody who is an exhibition guy. He's going to be my partner. So you play with anybody. But like somebody you want to help. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's somebody that he wants to get into the league, elevate, give some, you know, visibility to. And you find somebody like that too, you know? Find somebody that you want to sort of boost it doesn't matter what happens in the match it, honestly it's probably better if you guys win because afterwards no matter what you and i team up and we're the new face the team of the den you're back on the den so i pick whoever i want as a teammate yes versus you and your patreon yes. and then i'm back on the den yeah yes yes what do you say i was not expecting this um just say yes what's there yes. to think about yeah you know i miss you <laughs> i miss you so I can't Thank believe you. this. Oh my god. This is amazing. Back. You're back. I've missed you so much. I you too. <gasps> You're back. Okay? I Next don't even week. know what to say. Next Titans. Okay? Find team. somebody. We'll talk about it, okay? Okay. We'll talk soon. I miss you! I'm back on the den. Holy <gasps>